and get through it. Um, this is Track Girl Summer presented by World's Greatest. I am your host, Natasha Hastings, with my co-host, Corey Carter. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, IG, Natasha Hastings. Follow the Corey Monster, Instagram, IG, Twitter. You know Instagram. where to find me. Yeah. Follow the World's Greatest on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, follow Track Girl Summer. The, the Twitter things are popping off now. Um, we do our predictions every day, and you can interact with us on Twitter about our interactions because we go and post there after. About our predictions. About our hustle clean podium predictions. You said you can interact with us about our interactions. Did I say that? Yeah, it's okay. I got you. Um, I'm still drinking my coffee. You also didn't let me do our jingle, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Go, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Track girl summer. Track girl summer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need you to at least get a hand clap from me. I'm still I'm still drinking my coffee. I'm still it's still early. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah. Did you check our IG this morning? <laughs> Apparently closing on 1300. Hey, thank you. So keep following us on IG. Follow us on YouTube. Um, we're going to get the interviews that we've done up on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can go and check that out. Um, yeah. What do you have in store for today? Today, man, uh, it's going to be an amazing day. Um, first of all, oh wait, I'm skipping things. We bring the culture to track and field. I noticed that, but I just, I just let you have that one. Cause I was like, she's already. <sighs> I'm trying. I'm trying to get it going. Anyway, we bring the culture you to track to, and field. No, I got trail? it. I got it. Thank you. Uh, we'll be coming to you every day. Um, today is Thursday. We've got two more days after today. Um, we've been bringing you predictions, our shenanigans, great guests. We have more amazing guests today. But before we get into who our guests are, um, I mean track, <laughs> track and field. <laughs> I haven't had time to watch any other sport in the Olympics because track is life. And boy, oh boy, we have um, some amazing performances, but then some disappointments to discuss. But we're going to give uh, Ryan Coke. Ryan Crasher and Joe Coke showed out in the, in the shot put. Um, and then we'll talk about some relay talk. Um, and then we will be joined by none other than Bianca Knight and Tyson Gay. So it's a relay party today. We'll be doing our predictions for uh, the Hustle Clean podium picks with Bianca and Tyson for both the men and women's four by one podium. And I know that's gonna be some spicy talk because... When we play tw tweets or videos, you can click the videos, play them. Um, let's get into the fit check today. Honestly, guys, there's days where I really bring it. And today is one of those days. It's like a little two-piece moment. Get into the little rhinestone bedazzle hair. Get into the eyes and then hit them with the shoes. You know I love the women's J's, so I killed it today. And I'm just- Can you, you agree know, that I killed it today? You killed it, you Thank look you. really nice. I am rocking my one of my boho it's giving me, chic. It's giving me like lemonade. You mom know. dresses, a little, you know, decolletage. You know, you know we love a clan call. Um, since it's in my pocket, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it. A little war paint, 400 meter diva on the lips. Um, and mom shoes. I'm not even going. They come off anyway. So there we go. Uh, these. 110 hurdles. Huh? Wait, what? Oh, we had Ollie Pop 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 it. This is why we're co-hosts. Today's um, flavor is ginger lemon. That clearly I need. You uh, need ginger, lemon, honey, and prayer. Don't worry about it. Um, I think that but let's let's talk about those 110 hurdles. You gonna start there? Yeah, Bachi! That's why her... Last night, that's all she could say. This is why your voice is like that. Last night, all she could say, Pachi. That's my, that's my I accent. I told them. 
I told him, Fachi. And and Aries also told him. Aries, he said if, Aries if something it. happens to Grant, Parchi's gonna be there to swoop up that gold. And he did. Mm. Grant is good. Mm-hmm. Um, Grant was out. Grant got out. Out. Was out. It was probably like I probably heard of four or five that like parchment just like you could see his trill. He wasn't as tight the last four hurdles. You could see his trill opening up, and, and it caused him. I to wouldn't have the noticed hurdle. any of that if Aries didn't break that down for us. So, shout out to Aries Merritt. We'll post that interview, but sorry. Yeah, um, you could see him kind of like floating over the the mm-hmm. hurdles, and um. When you're in the air like that, you can't you can't apply force to gravity. You gotta be moving fast. You're not moving in the no. air. Well, you are. That's the only time you are moving. Not fast or, enough. But we all come down off that hurdle. Um, I'm just munching these grapes. Yeah, girl. They were just share. I ate like half your grapes, <laughs> and Liam likes the grapes. I'm so he's gonna be so upset. Anyway, I think I think Archie goes down as the biggest upset for this Olympic Games. Like. You think so? I do. I I don't think that. I mean, I think the grass. We we I. That we knew. We knew that wasn't. Even so though much we didn't say shock, it. Yeah, it wasn't. But I think Parchi was. I think he's been running well. I think he's been running well, but I think. Can I say this? You can say whatever. I think Parchi winning isn't the biggest shock. I think Grant losing is the biggest shock to me. I. Because I, I believe that Parchi could get it done, but I just didn't think Grant could get beat. You know, does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. So this, like, I don't know Parchi's talent. We're going to get into that when we talk about some things later on about U.S. expectations. So I think I think that is spot on that, like, we – I'm not going to put myself in that category. But – Grant has looked so good this year and so Grant, and we didn't see him falter ever once. So I just Grant didn't see him doing good. it. good. I'm not taking that away from him. Um, but I don't know. I was I was I was watching parchment through the rounds. Um, oh, shout out to Ronald Levy. Jamaica got not one but two mm-hmm. men on the mm-hmm. podium. Um, and congrats to our teammate, Team USA Grant, on the silver medal. Um, but I just I just love that lean that Grant had. He he, because let's be clear, Grant had to. Le- he it was funny because he was leaning. He looked and saw that he wasn't about to get the gold. And you can see him stretch his body even further. And he came through the line at, at 13.09. And and Ronald came through 13.10. Mm-hmm. He almost wasn't about to get in silver either. Mm-hmm. He really had to stretch for that silver. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was a it was an exciting race all around. Yeah. Um, happy for all three guys. Um I mean this in the most uh nicest non-messy way i know that there was some drama with the jamaican men getting to the olympics and i think just making it on the podium period made it all worth it to them so mm-hmm. congrats to them um Pachi. Pachi. <laughs> i've been like i've been coffee capping natasha and her mom's accent all week <laughs> it's still terrible and honestly disrespectful but i think i'm getting slightly better Pachi. Stop. Like you need to we have several more days of the show. And I I mean I can. I can talk all day. But we would people would like to hear you speak. Okay. But now speak on this men's four hundred. Because... The men's four hundred. Can I just get can can me and Jeremy get our flowers, please? Can we get our flowers? It's not about you right now. Can we get our flowers? It's not about you. We're can talking we get about our flowers? some of the men who actually competed. In like- I mean, I just remember somebody saying, like, I mean, he wore a T-shirt in the semis. Is his game really in it? Is his head really in the game? You didn't have to bring that up. I did, though. Like, you could, you could speak on yourself. <laughs> I did. You could speak. I just I just had some questions, and you know what? Stevie had some answers. Man. Okay. I like that. I like that. That was a good one. That was a good one. But no, another exciting race. Of course, we were watching Norman and Michael Cherry. But as those guys were coming, first of all, Norman took out. He had to. You're in my name. What else are you going to do? He was out. Because you think you're running down these boys? You got to get out. You got to put yourself in a position to win. And I I applaud him for running a brave race. Yeah. But as they were coming around that bend, it was all Gardner. You were poking me. I said, Gardner's in the lead. Gardner's in the lead. And once they evened out and came, uh, came down the straightaway... Uh, Karani. 
Karani. Y'all know I love me some Karani James. Karani, I'm so happy to see him doing well and just back he, on the podium. He had to go through so much to get back in fighting shape to, to see him on this podium. Like, I yeah. know, you know, we, you know, we're biased in our team USA, but there's you gotta give the credit where it's due. And, and there's, know the there's certain athletes we just list, like, I don't care what country you're for. for I'm rooting for you to win. And Caprani is one of those people. Like, I wanted him to get the gold, but I'm glad he he's on the podium. But Stevie. <laughs> Stevie looked good. He came out the turn in the lead and just said, I'm gone. I'm Deuces. Y'all figure out second and third, but the gold is for me, baby. And we got to give a shout out to Zambrano, um, mm -hmm, who came mm -hmm. in for the silver medal. He Jeremy also, kept talking about him. Zambrano brought him up. I should have listened to my teammate. Because uh, we would have been almost perfect, close to perfect, <laughs> if we had thrown Zambrano in there. I, You know, Zambrano was the wild card that, that we... We just weren't sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to give honorable mention to our guys. Michael Cherry had a PB race of his life. And that's what I wanted to say is because speaking of what people said, you were like, I'm not sure. He was nervous and shaky at, at Olympic trials. But Michael Cherry showed up when he had to. He didn't the get on the... American performer. And, and he PB'd. It's like he did his best performance where it mattered. It wasn't enough to get him on the podium, but, like. If, it, I, if I'm ever going to like to be wrong, it's in this instance. Yeah. Yeah. He ran well. Like, you can't say he didn't put together. He put together the best race he's ever put together. Exactly. exactly. He's just running against some. He's running against some bad some boys. Dogs. Some bad boys. <laughs> and, um, and Norman was fifth in 44-31. Yeah. So, uh. Shout out to the boys, so your you, Olympians. You got some really interest, an interesting fact about the men's two, men's US 400. Man, so this is, first of all, let me backtrack. Let me go back. The only time the US has not made the podium in this, in this event was 1920, 1980. We boycotted we that. We boycotted those games. And in 2012, this also means the men not making the podium in the 400 also means that the U.S. has not won any gold in the men's sprints for this Olympic Games. Individual sprints, but I mean, I guess the team sprints too, gosh yeah. darn. Making this the first time in history, in history, that the U.S. men not home gold in the sprints. And we're going to get in more into that. We're, no, let's get into it now. I mean, okay. we could talk about it a little bit because we kind of had the conversation we went, a little bit. We've been yelling we, at each other all day and night about this. <laughs> before we got on air, and I think we have differing opinions. And and I've been, of course, you can imagine, we're all texting the Twitter sphere, the friends and such. And I am of the belief that it's not that there. There's this narrative out there that Team USA is underwhelming and not performing well, particularly the men. Because let's be clear, the women are. We we said this about the trials. That we said the trials. I said the men are running good races. The women are making history. The women, yes, exactly. Shout out to the women. I love to be, you know. Anyway, um, but is it a matter of Team USA not running well, or are we just getting beat? Because in the instance of Michael Cherry running a PB, he got beat by three men. Fred Curley got on the podium in the two in the one hundred. We came second, first, second, third, and fourth in the 200. We came second and fourth. Thank you. Just claim on. We just still, claim on. I'm still, it's the, it's we, the, just, we just claim on, Dre. Right? Um, Let me get my coffee down. <laughs> and so it, it, it almost kind of feels like, right, to me let, me, let me say for me, as a person sitting on the couch saying, you suck. But if we were those guys that made the podium in second, third, or was in fourth place, but ran a PB, hearing other people say, you guys suck and you're not performing well. It's like you guys are top five in the world, top 10 in the Who world. the hell are we? So to sit here and say that the US is also, not performing time out, well, time out. Before I don't you go think any it's further, fair. Disclaimer, I never said that they sucked. But I'm not saying I'm, that that's what I'm just saying, said. I just want to be, you may kind of seem like, I'm, I'm not saying, saying it, but like she might, I just want to make sure. A lot you know. of the headlines are saying, the, the headlines team, on me. The, the team USA is underwhelming. They're not performing well. They're not. They're on the freaking podium. We didn't win gold this time. The 400 is the only sprint event, and now the 4x1, that we're not on the podium. 
I think it, I think it's there's a there's a and it's the, a double edged sword. And the men are yeah we we've, we've created this standard, but again as as the athlete, <clears throat> and as the person who's come forth at the Olympics, it's tough for me to sit here on the couch and watch these men go out there work hard all these years we sit here and tell their stories and talk about the blood sweat and tears and because they didn't win gold we're going to sit here and say that they're not doing well but, I'm, but okay as the athlete she plays I, I, I feel like yes it's not fair for the public to say like you should do better because who are y'all but as the athlete i i know when you got fourth you were happy about it. No, I wasn't. But I, I'm saying. But I went back and reflected on it, and after the fact, I was happy. Yes. But, but what I'm saying is, we're also in a culture where we're saying, like, I mean, it was a tweet the other day. We're talking about mental health. We're talking about the fact that we only celebrate gold medals and not bronze and silver. But so it's like, unless I win, all the work that I put in doesn't matter. But at the end of the day. How many people are on this stage right now? No, and I and I get that. Um, what I'm saying is that I think one of the reasons why there is that expectation is one, I think in, historically we've been we've I been just that read girl. The facts. You're right. We've been I that just... girl, and so you get used to just like winning. And the facts excellence, are the facts. Excellence is a standard, and we're used to winning. On the second hand, it's like we do have a very young team, and they're they're actually doing, like you said they're doing, they're very, doing well, very well, and I think they are going to grow into being a dominant U.S. team when we come through, and we're getting medals on medals, golds on gold on gold. But I think it, I don't think it's fair for people to say you suck. But I think it's like it is like oh okay, like we're not used to not getting gold. Like and it is a fact. It's fair to say like we've never done this before and never gotten a gold in sprints. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's it's to be disappointed. But I think as an athlete, you're like, okay, like, as an athlete, I'm like, okay, if I, if I got bronze, right, I'd still be like, okay, let me figure out how I didn't, how I Always. messed up I'm not so saying, I can get to gold. Yeah, I'm um, not saying none of those things I think we just have exist. a very young team in the sprints. Mm -hmm. We're still f trying to find out, like, I feel like for a long time we've had, and we'll talk about this, I want to talk about this with Tyson. But we've always had a, a guy that's like, I'm that dude. When it comes to the sprints, like, I'm the king of sprints. And we still, we've just got princes out there. We've got princes out there. there, And someone eventually will go ahead and sit on the throne and be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. But it's it, we're in a growing phase. I don't disagree. I agree. But there's there. I can't say that I look at the men's sprints right now and say that I see that presence, that leader. I don't disagree with that. Um, I just, I, I think my point is that gold is always the standard, no matter what. I'm not arguing that. But I do think that we have to get to a point where we can celebrate our, our yes. wins, whether it be silver, bronze, fourth, fifth, whatever, and still say, Congratulations, y'all are doing amazing. Yeah, but and, at the same and time, to, and gold to, still needs to be the goal. And to, I, I'm, I just said, okay, <laughs> I just I'm just said saying, that. but also congratulate the rest of the world. Yes, the and world I is think, coming up. I on think us. that we are in the position that we are in because of that lack of respect for the performers around the world. I don't. So, I, I'm just, I'm just saying. Gold, gold is always the standard. Yes, but I think that we we need to be a little bit more respectful. But can I say something comes, else? You, you're going to. How do I say this? I respect. I. I feel like I respect the rest of the world. Obviously, I respect my competitors, but also as a unit, I still think. Because here's what's happening: it's like we're getting beat by the Netherlands in the heptathlon. We're getting beat by Polish in the camera throw. We're getting beat by the Jamaicans in the sprint. But there's not another team that like has people top ten every single event. You know what I'm saying? And the use it the USA is showing up at every single event. And I think that's why we can't say like, oh we like it's not like when it comes down to the medal count, I know even with this we might we're not have a goal. We're still winning. And that's what it is. It's China's that, winning the gold medal count, but Shout out to China. But you know, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, I think individuals across the world are balling out. Mm -hmm. But as a team, 
USA is still that girl. You can't tell me otherwise. I didn't say that. I didn't say okay. That. I'm just, I'm just making <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I, and I, I think we do respect our, our competitors internationally. We have to get, because if you don't, that's how you get beat. I just think we have a young team. And I think we also have a public that only watches us for every four years and every four years are used to us seeing gold. So there, so I think there's, that's also part of the perception that we're not doing well. Cause it's like, wait, I didn't know that. Cause in four years, a lot can happen. A lot, a lot of new stars can come up. And if you only care about, about track and field every four years, yeah, it's going to be shocking. To but see. I, I makes, find it, it since you watch it. I, I know find it interesting that it's not just the every four year crowds. There are true track and field fans. I mean, there are people that I've been having conversations with. It's like, Team USA men just aren't showing up, and I'm just like, I mean, I had a Can I, I had a question? conversation about Noah and 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 Noah's lane assignment, and I'm like, yeah, he was in lane three, and his best times came out of lane eight or seven, but he came off the turn in the lead. He just mm-hmm. didn't have anything for DeGrasse. Let us give credit where credit is due. I'm not. Like, we, I feel like we've gone on this show and and said that maybe. But I'm not saying that we're saying that. I'm just. Here's, I'm, here's I'm saying thing. that we need to change who, the narrative. Who, you, who are you? You don't have to drop names, but I would imagine the people you were having conversation with are also people who have been on Team USA. Am I wrong or not? No. No. Okay. Then never mind. They were. They were coaches, but they're not. Okay. Like then never team mind. Because I was. Because I'm like, if if you're talking. I'm not. I'm not saying you were, but if you're, we talked to Jeremy Warner yesterday, and if Jeremy Warner's like, "Yo, when we, when I was on the track, we were getting, we were out here dominating the 400." He is like, "Okay, I had to take. You got to take that on the chin because, like, not only he's not only saying it, he's done it." But yeah, we are. We have eight minutes to go through all these finals. <laughs> all right. First of all, speaking of gold and the men. Ryan Krauser might have had one of the most dominant throws performances of all time. He threw the Olympic record on his first throw. The first throw, he came out and said, I'm going to give y'all a show. And then the rest the rest of his throws either equaled or bested the Olympic record, the previous Olympic record, because which is insane. Um, Shout out to Megan Clark. I'm going to say that, that he was out there throwing for you, boo. <laughs> Megan. <laughs> um, and then... We doubled up on him, got silver with Joe Kovacs. Um, he ran, he ran, he threw uh, 22.65 and Thomas Walsh from New Zealand, 22.47 with a season best for bronze. We got another gold. And another women's, one. Women's pole vault. Katie came through with that 490 in the pole vault, okay? She put the bar up to 501 and it was so funny because she started running at it and was just like, you know what? I ain't got it. Like she, she was just like, I think she just was like, I'm Olympic gold medalist, so excited. I can't refocus to try to get over five meters. Um, you saw Sidor- Sidorova. Um, I don't even know where you are in the document. It's no fine. Way. I got this. I'm Because we got eight minutes to get through, and I want to give people, people their shout-outs. Give people their flowers. Especially if they're not from a different country, because Natasha is like, we only... The- First she goes on and is like, we're biased. It's Team USA. And now it's like, I the world, they're due. I am. I just, I just want us to be clear that, like, more than one thing can exist at once. I'm not but. repeating this girl's name because I, I struggled through it, but <laughs> Silver came through for 45. Holly Bradshaw from Great Britain um, also at 45, um, but due to misses, she got bronze. And our defending gold... Are you passing it? I'm over here. Spilling Olipop on my computer. Um, defending Olympic gold medalist, Katarina Stefaniti, uh, Stanford grad as well. She was my team captain when I was on the team. She jumped, she vaulted a seat of 40 and did make the podium, but got four. I want to um, backtrack a little bit to. Uh, we don't have backtracking. No, no, no. Okay, it's just a really quick statement yeah. about Krauser and uh, Bauman winning gold. Um, shout out to them. Let, let's Bauman. give Bauman. Oh, Valerie. Valerie. Almond. Because <laughs> on the document it was Valerie. I'm sorry. <laughs> But what my point being, shout out to them while we're sitting here talking about men sprints not um, for a while. When we talk about changing the guard, we can say that the sprints were carrying the, uh, you know, the goals. Shout out to the, the, the field events. For picking up. For picking up. Speaking of field events, okay. Men's triple jump. Um, Pichardo from uh, Portugal one with 1798 that's a national record for portugal and he won it on his third jump 
Oh, um, yeah, they, they were exciting to watch. Yeah, they were. It was going back and forth. Um, Yeming Zhu from China um, got second with a PB of 1757. Hugh Zango um, jumped 1747 for uh, bronze. And then our U.S. guys, I just had to give a shout to you guys. I'm president of the Will. I'm president of a lot of fan clubs, <laughs> but I'm president of the Will Clay <clears throat> fan club. He jumped 1744 to get fourth. Um, he was knocked off by, he was knocked off the podium. He was actually uh, um, going to get bronze, but Zoo came out with a great jump uh, in the fifth jump um, to get, to knock Will off the podium. But let's just remember, Will Clay had Achilles surgery and over, like a little bit over a year ago was relearning how to walk. And now he's jumping into being top five in the world, top four in the world. <clears throat> um, and then Donald Scott um, from the U.S. got seventh with 1780. 1718 he had a season best um he's got a new have you seen his baby no i haven't they're the cute, like not i'm not saying he's a cute but they are a very cute family him, <laughs> him his wife him his wife and his baby are a very cute unit and i love them and then um as far as the greatest athletes on the track the, the multi events <laughs> the second day concluded um damian warner finished with fourth all time um, as far as points go, with 9,018 points. Kevin Meyer from France got second with 8,726 8, points. Ashley Maloney from Australia got bronze with 8,649 points. Um, also, I just feel like our guys were in the hunt. I feel like they're going to continue. Handling had like so many PBs over yeah. the course of the, the decathlon too. Yeah, and he got fourth. Mm -hmm. um, and Zachary's Zemek of USA was in sixth, and Steve Bastian got tenth. I feel like our guys are really up in the mix. Um, yeah. We're on the podium, but like I, I feel like they're on their way up. Yeah. Um, women's heptathlon theme. She was like, "I'm gonna play with y'all through these events, but I'm gonna come up and get this gold." Because she, at one point, she was in like fourth. She wasn't even on the uh, podium. But that's the thing. That's the thing with with the multis. It's like the first day, it might look like someone's gonna shaky. win, but that might be their best event. So the second mm -hmm. day, you you know, mm -hmm. here come here, here comes theme. She's the second woman to defend her Olympic title in the heptathlon. Um, better from the Netherlands got um, second with six thousand six hundred eighty nine points, um, and Emma Osterweigel from Netherlands. Um, got the bronze with 6,590 points. Just like the men, our women were in the hunt. Kendall Williams got fifth, Annie Koontz got sixth, and Erica Bogar got ninth. Yeah. So definitely I could see these Kendall women. had a really good long jump too. That's one of her. Yeah. 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 Um, and then just a quick recap. Oh, and then in the men's uh, two, 20K race walk, Massimo Stana from Italy won. Uh, Koki, Koki Iki, Ikeda from Japan got second, and Toshi Toshi Hikazu Yamanashi. Come on, ha! that still probably is wrong. From Japan got third, so Japan was showing up in the race walk. And then see if our guess is in. Why? Why? I, I, um, I don't know that she's in, but um, why? Well, I, I still got two oh, more things. Oh, you got two more things. Go ahead. Men's fifteen semi. This mm, is this is it was a heartbreaker. Because our reigning gold medalist, Matt Centrowitz, from the U.S., will not be in the final. Um, but it, but Cole Hawker from the U.S., he got second in seat. He will be showing up for the final. But what happened is I feel like this is – this is in the distance run, in the distance events, you have – sometimes you have an honest race and sometimes you have a more strategic race. So if you were in the first heat um, – it was definitely a slower heat, um, and that's kind of what caught Matt Centris up. He was ninth in his heat with um, a season best of 333.69, but the winning heat of the first, the winning time of the first heat would have gotten eighth in the second heat. So it really came down to those 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 big cues um, because it's, it's – isn't that crazy? <laughs> I'm still shaking my head about it because – you know, in the sprints, you just kind of like go big cue, little cue, but also like, you know, it's top, top two from each. I, I have to remember because, you know, it's three at the games. But um, the idea that like <laughs> from 
first to eighth place, like but that's nobody this, would have. That's but that's on this. That's just that's not to say that those guys wouldn't Weren't, have like, wouldn't have ran. They just ran a strategic, a strategic race. race. They had the ability. To, yeah. They definitely have the ability. I think if it was mixed up, the times would have been different for those guys. But they said we're going to conserve and have a little bit more legs to the final. I think they had the. He wanted to be coming to the final, so those guys because they didn't have to work as hard to make it to the final. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, it was, um, it was a fat. If you nice. were in heat, if you were in heat two, you had to go, or you were not making this team. Um, so it kind of just, it's just kind of hard to see that, you know, basically. Depending on what heat you are, your chances to make it the final went up or down. Um, and then another in the four by four heats um, for the women, USA is through with the top um, with the top time of three twenty eighty six. Um, we went Kayla Whitney to Waddling. Kendall ran a leg. Sure. You know she because you know she has that viral. Kendall, if you guys don't know who Kendall Alice is, she's the girl who went viral a couple years ago for her amazing anchor leg in the four by four NCAAs mm -hmm. um for USC. And then we close it off uh with Irby. Um so Jamaica Jamaica had the second fastest time overall. They were also in our heat so they got second. I we're think, seeing a lot of that the top teams in the same heat. Like the four by one is the same way. We'll get into that later, but yeah. Yeah. So I a lot of stuff going down on the track. Um, I I agree with you that like if you if I had a bronze or a silver, like how are you gonna tell me? I don't. I, I want to read this comment that came up um, while you were doing the the rundown. Bianca needs five minutes. She said her computer is rebooting, so we have a little bit more time okay, cool. um, until BK comes. Charmaine G said, Natasha, I agree about not giving others credit where it is due. There's always an excuse when USA doesn't win. The narrative is usually that USA lost the goal and not that they were beaten. Grant Holloway was beaten. He didn't lose the goal. He was beaten. Noah was beaten by DeGrasse. It wasn't because of the lane. There is no assigned medal with names engraved on them. USA likes to count their medals on paper as if other athletes are not coming to win. I mean, I get, look, when I won my little medal, um, no, 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 no. We're not here to minimize. When you won your world championship, that you were not picked to win. I, no, but one, you, no one talked about me. You worked your ass the, off to win. That's not what we're doing here. We're not minimizing. Wins. Well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I just like to say my little. Well. No, um, that's she, not what we're doing here. Don't give me the sports psychologist coming out. She said you better <laughs> with confidence. Don't what I'm saying is, it's funny because my parents still to this day have like the race recorded on their TV. Like, you better. Um, and they always get, they, they don't even mention you. They, they don't, even, and I'm like, I don't care. For me, I don't care if you mention my name before the race. I'll make sure you mention it after it. Your name is um, in history. Thank you. Um, but what I'm saying is, everyone goes in. I feel like this is without all the sports. I kind of hate. We're doing it. We're commentators, but I hate like we don't. Clearly, we don't are know we what commentators say that again, girl. We're, we're doing something. I don't know what we are. We out here on this couch, and people are tuning in to hear us talk the craziest. But we don't like we do these predictions every day. We don't know what what's going to happen, and that's the beauty of track and field is because you you have your idea. Yes, the and, beauty of track and, and field is anyone, anything can happen. Any, anything can happen. I like I always say like people are like, how did you? went out of lane and I'm just like, as long as I have a lane, I knew I had a chance. There were championships where I did not have a lane in the final and I and I was like, I have a lane and for me, I knew I had a chance. Other people didn't think so. So I, I get it that, but I think I think we are also not talking about the individuals. I don't think anyone is, at least for me, I'm not looking at Noah and being like, dang, you should have gotten gold. I'm not looking at at Fred Curley and being like, you should have gotten gold. You know, mm -hmm. I'm saying, I think we're talking about as, as, as a as unit, a unit and as a team. And you know, Natasha, when we are in these team meetings at major championships, we have a meeting. And what does Ruth say every time we are team USA? We are the, we always say we are the number one team in the world. 
in order to be the number one team in the world, we do have to get gold. That's his point, point player. I'm not, and I'm not putting the burden on Trayvon Vermel. I'm not putting the burden on Michael Norman. I'm but saying as a unit, we're not looking like that's not you, necessarily he, true because if you if you take it back to the NCAA's where you might you know you just got to score points. So if if we're getting on the podium and we're getting on the podium in multiple numbers. Like it still doesn't take away from us being number one. We're still winning the medal count. I, we're just not winning the gold medal count. <laughs> so I, I think we can go on and on for days about this. You, you, but I just, I, I think and, it, I and, think it's hard to say we're the and best. When we best. lose, when we lose, because even Hi, sometimes the best in the world lose. I, to me, I've always said what makes a good champion is one that can take their L's well. And not, and I'm not saying that Team USA is doing this because I see the men celebrating their wins and celebrating their silver, bronze, and 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 the everybody who has won What do you gold. mean by taking your L's well? You, you got to respect your competition. Like, I'm not saying don't be disappointed. You can be disappointed. You should be disappointed. Being disappointed is a sign that you care. But... You also have to take the time to celebrate your wins and allow yourself to celebrate your wins because I will be the first to tell you, don't celebrate your wins and you'll look back and have accomplished so much, but you don't realize that you did because you spent your time moping about not winning when you've already won. Me and you have different definitions of winning. Like, I think you can be proud of your accomplishment. And I'm talking specifically for me and how I deal with loss. Like, you, you you can look back on if you how do you say it? how did you say it? you you'll look back and not realize you had accomplishments that if won. you say moping like I don't mope I get to work I I always say you can lose once or you can lose twice right mm -hmm. so if I lose it, the way you lose twice is you take that L and you don't learn from it you need like for me all my biggest wins have come from my biggest losses and I don't mope saying. about it but I I I let that. I, I let that chip sit on my shoulder. Yeah. I let that anger my, I let my, that anger fuel my heart. My wins and, are so sweet because of all my losses. Yes. I'm not saying And I, I in in a big arena like this, yes, I'm gonna okay, I got bronze silver, but but in the back of my mind, I still want gold. And I'm going to go work for it. I'm gonna be okay, all right. And and, and, and what, I'm gonna go I think the difference that it, I I'm saying both of those things can exist in one. Um I'm just gonna. Yeah. Someone says that they love the show. We're not gonna be over it. Like you thought, you thought you were gonna get rid of me. <laughs> come, we're coming back. We'll have we're a new schedule. Um, don't worry. You're not. We're not going anywhere. We got to figure out our life after the the Olympic coverage. <laughs> but it's not over. I'm just saying for me, for me. No one. No one can tell these athletes how to feel, and no one can say, "Oh, you should be disappointed." Whatever. We should have our goals, whatever. I'm not saying that. I'm saying for me, I run off of rage and off of proving people wrong. And when I take an L and I define not anything but being the best in the world as an L because excellence is a standard, I'm going to go get it. The next, I'm going I'm to let, the, I, I told myself when I didn't make the team, I said, you will never feel this way. I mean, I felt this way again this year, but I said, oh, you will never feel this way. And every time I had to go into the workroom, every time I had to work out, that is, that memory is what, what fueled me to my wins. That's all I'm saying. Hi, Bianca Knight. I'm not saying. What's up, guys? Well, I don't know what y'all talking about, but it sounds like a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get into what we're talking about, we never got to talk about you last right. time you were on. So let's and get so into that. Before, and before we get into that, I don't know if we have any new people here today. So let me do your intro again so that people know what time it is. So Bianca Knight is one of my former training partners. Uh, she's a Mississippi native, Gatorade Athlete of the Year, 2008 200-meter NCAA champ at 22-4, which was the collegiate record at the time, um, Olympic gold medalist, and a member of the world record four by one that was set in London in 2012. Um, also my favorite stat, mom of two beautiful boys. Um, so she's the perfect person for us to get into the relay talk today. We got into it a little bit um, the other day. 
But, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but we're going to wait for Tyson to come on to get into the okay, real. Okay, okay. Oh, T. Reezy. Yes, T. Reezy is in the building. Someone said, I first saw Bianca Knight when World used 100 meter on TV in 2005. They still got the oh, oh, my God. Can you send it to me? Email me that We'll, we'll figure that out. DM us at Track Girl Summer, and we'll put you guys in, in touch. Con- touch. So you can get that video, the memory. I need that. You know, I got a documentary. Coming I want to watch it. Add that footage. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. They're gonna. They're sending. They're sending it via Twitter. Oh, oh you said that. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> Y'all can hear me. But yeah, I need that video. That's lit. I be looking for all my videos. Um, I feel like that was that was the first goal for the U.S. and the youth in the hundred, or it might have been. It might have been. And I didn't know that, obviously, at the time. Audio is low. You, but um, I feel like I, I can hear her. I can hear her, too. Maybe you need it. Uh, do you, um, are you able to see your mic settings on your computer? Um, yes. No, I lied. Where would I see that at? I actually had to get on my laptop because for whatever reason, my desktop is not connecting to my keyboard. I don't even know why. Like, it's always something after the power will go out and something just decides not to work no more. But um, let's see, mic settings. I said, let's make sure she talks louder or gets closer to the mic. So just yell at us. Yeah, just yell. Bianca's too cool and smooth for that. So. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? You still can't right. hear me? I can't, I can't hear, hear you. you. So so let's let's get into it because I don't want to lose too much time. Um, there's a couple of things that I want to talk to you about um, before we get into the relay things. Your journey on the relay. Um, a lot of what you said the other day, I want to make sure that we get because, you know, we have that bad connection. That's why we messed up on our picks. My you know, that's not true. Um, <laughs> you heard what Bianca said. But... <laughs> Um, I want to talk to you about your foundation. You know, I have a nonprofit as well. So giving back to the community is something that I think is important. And we definitely need to be highlighting athletes that have taken their experiences and their platforms and now use them to give back to the generation to come. And also I've been, uh uh-oh, let me stop moving around. What's going on with our, okay. Also, (laughs) I saw where you mentioned that you don't really miss track. And you know, don't really have any regrets. And so I, I know for me, a lot of my experience or my um, my reason for starting my nonprofit is a lot of the things that I felt like I was missing and how I want to fill the gaps for the generations to come. So just give us a little bit about, you know, what inspired the foundation? What about your experiences is, is, is an experience that you're hoping to change for the generations to come? Um, well, of course, you know, I grew up in Mississippi and I didn't, they, we're not a track state, so it's not real big on track and our resources are very little. Um, if it wasn't for obviously me just having an exception, ex- exceptional talent to the point where I was invited so many places and it was paid for eventually, um, I would have probably never gotten to those places. So I know that that's not the case for other athletes, especially where I'm from and also our high school system. Um, I think it's a commonality in the South because I'm in North Carolina now and they have the same issues where they don't even actually have a track coach. So they don't have blocks. They don't have, well, let's say they don't have functioning equipment. Let's just say that. And the school doesn't put it in the budget for them to get that stuff. So I kind of wanted to fill that void for the coaches. It's like, okay, well, um, you know, I'll give a grant. I give a thousand dollars to five different schools every year to get tr- tr- strictly for track equipment. They can't use it for anything else. It can be for uniforms, batons, blocks, whatever they want to use it for. But I don't give it to the school. I give it to the track team, the track coach. So even for um, travel, whatever they need it for, because they don't get the budget like the other sports get. So I wanted to fill that gap. And then sometimes I partner with Gill, so they actually get it at a discount um, if they do it through me and I just have it sent through the school. Um, What else? I host uh, two track meets in Mississippi now. And one of them, there's no registration fee. If you run well at the state meet, you are automatically invited to the Mississippi Meet of Champions where 
this year, well, 2022, I'm hoping to actually get my out of state kids to come so that they can actually kind of like your Nike. I want it to eventually be one of those big circuit meets where all of the top athletes end up coming to Mississippi because we have two kids who are number one in the U.S. in the 100, 200, and 400. Um, they're in Mississippi. So, um, you know, they did a lot of traveling. And I said, you know, I feel like kids should try to come to y'all. So let me try to get this meet together. And maybe next year, y'all don't have to travel as much. And we'll bring those kids to y'all to compete or whatever. So uh, that's one aspect of the foundation. And obviously, the second I go and I speak at schools. And I, of course, this is a nonprofit. So it's donation based. If you donate, cool. If you don't, that's fine. But I don't charge. So BK, BKFgives.org. That's mm-hmm. where you have to go give to the um, the initiative, the cause here. Um, I love what you said about bringing the athletes to Mississippi because one thing that I think is true is sometimes we have to see it to believe it, right? And yeah. so if you keep your kids in the states, in the state of Mississippi to run big and run against in these big competitions, you know, then I think that is definitely more encouraging to get more athletes into the sport and more top athletes coming out of Mississippi. So I love that. And thank you for uh, doing that cause, making that cause happen. Not not only just talking about it, but actually making it happen. What is going I don't on know. with the camera today? I, I know what it is. I'm so fly. It's like, it's overloading the camera. I get it. It's okay, camera. We'll work with you. Um. So another thing that you've started that I think this might be for profit, but still for the sport, um, is your app called BK Track Stars, um, mm-hmm. and which helps develop the next generation of track and field athletes. The goal is to use artificial intelligent intelligence and predictive algorithms to help develop and train aspiring athletes. So tell us more about that. You just <laughs> Well, you know, I sit, I sit on a lot of ideas. We thought about the app when, you know, there you have huddle for football and you have rivals for football. You have rivals for basketball. Basically, every other sport kind of know where they rank in terms of um, their recruitability against their, um, op- mm-hmm. not opponents, but their classmates. And track doesn't have anything like that. And I thought that it would be cool if I'm 11 or if I'm 12 year old, 12 years old, I see how I rank against my 11 and 12 year olds versus, you know, everybody else. And then I see, you know, well, how do I rank against the 11 or 12 year olds out of like around the world or whatever. And um, I think it gives the parent, the coach and the kid a better idea of, you know, because it's hard for kids to even pick events right now. Yeah. So it's like figuring out you're much better in this one than you are in that one, things like that. So it's kind of to help them pick an event and also to kind of see your progression in terms of yourself. Like there's a page on there that shows you how you're doing from meet to meet and season to season. So it's more so to keep athletes focused on themselves and not everything around them all the time so that's one aspect of it and then artificial intelligence is to help help them train more intuitively i always try to say that so it don't it's like it's not gonna it's just no perfect science but it's to tell you like these are the workouts you're doing these are the times you run into meets is this are these workouts working out so the app will actually be able to say well maybe you know if you do this or change you know maybe change you know certain variables of the workout maybe it'll yield a better 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 time but it has to get to know you first so you have to actually log your workouts in because we're going to get your results so just log your workouts in we'll say okay well this is what they're doing and these are the times that they're hitting and this is what they're getting out of that this looks like that's working for them or that's not working for them or whatever so it's to help a coach you know not just be giving them something to give it to them or whatever. It's like, no, you actually need to make a workout plan for them because this ain't working what you're giving them. And it's showing that it's not working. So there's so many things that like, I have so many questions that I want to get to, but we, we're not going to have enough time. I, I see your hand, but I'm ignoring you. I know, I want to <laughs> What's the question? It's... Anyways, Bianca, the question I have is like, so it tracks the workouts and you can see, Hey, you're, this athlete responds to these type of workouts. And then, like, I'm a, I'm a, I have my workouts from senior year. Maybe I can send those workouts to my collegiate coach because, and kind of, um, 
decrease that that time when you're trying to, where your coach is trying, trying to get to, to your out. body figure out what workouts to respond to and you can say hey this is what i did all my senior year like not telling a college coach but um how to coach me but like here's what my body responds yeah. to because some 400 runners train like a two four people some 400 runners train like a four eight and like having that information might be helpful just to continue on with collegiate success Yes, it's definitely a good recruiting tool because you can make it on there if you want people to see the workouts you're doing or not. So you can have that public or you can have it private. So um, and also I have a platform for coaches and athletes for the recruiting that they get a whole database of colleges that meet that they meet the criteria of based on what they're doing right now. And it's just a better way because everybody's looking at the power five schools and it's like you can get it done from any school so stop looking at just these schools and these are the ones you can get a full scholarship to right now the goal is to not pay for school <laughs> so uh, try why would you rather go somewhere and walk on that you're gonna have to pay versus going to this school where you can go for free and you know you have an option so it sends them a whole list of colleges that they can you know pretty much hey, I think I meet the criteria of this school. So, and as, like I said, and college coaches can look at it as well and see what athletes meet the criteria of their school. So it's like a middleman for recruiting as well. That's awesome. I, I, I want to talk about, um, you know, again, you and I were training partners. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. Something <laughs> people may not know, Bianca and I actually ran against each other in the 400. Ooh. At high school national. Not her gonna uh, post this picture. I already know she's gonna post this picture. <laughs> I didn't load it. I might find it. I didn't load it, but he Mom, might find I'm it. Gonna, I'm gonna find it. Y'all don't load it. <laughs> I posted it on my foundation page. So, but what I want to talk about is um, I love what you're doing with this app. Um, but there's so many like intersectionalities of like what you've been saying that like I hope I can form the question properly because I love you said that this is about the athlete comparing themselves against themselves and I remember mm -hmm. one time you and I did a speaking engagement and a parent asked us what were you running at such and such age and both of us were like that's not important because we didn't want that father to start comparing their child against what we were running mm -hmm. as athletes because we were pretty fast when we were kids but also i think we're, like gifted it's like we are gifted but the point that bianca and i made to each other was that number one we had the longevity that we had because yes we trained hard but also when i was 10 i was a 10 year old you That's know what i'm saying. saying like i was out there <laughs> running 400 you know and so i i think what you're doing is so important in that you know, it's giving athletes and coaches the tools mm -hmm. to see what works for them, but also don't burn these kids out. Mm -hmm. Let these kids be kids. We didn't have yes. a talk like, if, about if they're like, gonna be great, they're gonna be great. So, yeah. so, so, talk to us a little bit about that, because I, I, I think what you're doing, like, I want people to understand the importance of having these tools and understand. Let your kid have fun. All right, I'm gonna start. Yes. All right. <laughs> and it's crazy because a parent, um, his I think his daughter is like 10 or 11. He's like, oh, she's just not having fun. She's not doing this. And I said, and it's probably because you're making it too much of a task for her. I said, just let her go and explore the sport. We have so many different events. We have so everybody want their kids to be a sprinter or a jumper or this. They make and do all of that stuff. So just let them play around and let them have fun and see what they gravitate towards. And then he reached back out to me and was like, oh my God, I took your advice. And would you know it? She made it to Junior Olympics in the javelin. Like she's never even done it before, but I let her explore it and she did well in the javelin. And he said she's having so much fun and she's still running a little bit, but um, letting her do something else really did bring her love back to the sport. And I told him, you know, like you just said, they're kids, just let them have fun and um, there's another kid from Texas. He's number one in his age group, and we talk all the time. And he's just so concerned with his time, his time, his time. And I talked to his coach, and I said, listen, that time is going to come. Have fun. You should not be 12 years old stressing about the times that you're hitting in the sport, not if you plan to have a long career. It's going to come. Just go out there and run and have fun and, you know, just enjoy the process of where you are. Like Tasha said, it's 
I know it's different for these kids now because they're they're so into social media, so it's hard to not compare yourself to everybody else. Um, so I understand what they're up against. We didn't have that. We just was going from meat to meat, running like we really didn't have. The I extra was stuff. shaking dice that. I was shaking dice that, but it, it still is on a whole oh, other level, level right now. And, and I also more so like, ooh, how 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 well am I doing now? And still, you looking for what you doing? You still not looking yeah. for what yeah. everybody else doing? And for sure. um. It's just, it's, it's harder for them, but I think that once you start making it a thing, a job, a task, then you're going to, you're not going to have fun anymore. And, um, it's going to start feeling like so much hard work and, oh my gosh, I'm not doing well, which if you compare yourself to yourself, you'll see that you're PR in every meet. So what do you mean? You're not doing well. You're not doing well. Cause you're not winning. Like that doesn't determine if you're doing well or not. Like that was, whole conversation. <laughs> that, was, that was our whole debate just now before you came on, but it was in regards to Team USA. But I think <laughs> but, I think you know, Rob Benjamin is like a prime. I feel so bad that he's apologizing for not winning after running the second fastest time in right. history. Like how do you how do you put that kind of pressure on yourself to? cry because you're like so disappointed that you didn't get gold for your country and it's like bro y'all just ran times in the 400 hurdles that could have made the semifinals in the open 400 like what are you talking about some of us didn't even imagine seeing a race that fast so the idea that we're apologizing or people are sitting on their couch saying the team usa men aren't doing well like what what I is I was never even my, in my head, including Rye Benjamin on this, on this, because I'm like, Rye, I think we do need to, we have another episode another where we talk about <laughs> the pressure and like on young athletes and in developing young athletes, because I think we have so many young phenoms that people think that it's formal and it's not like y'all, these, these people weren't just, they work hard, but let's be very clear, God reached out and touched them. And made specifically, sure, specifically, it was like <laughs> chosen. And I think what happens is, is like you see, you see the Sydneys, you see the IJs, you see the things, and you think your child should be on that track. And it's like that is how you destroy a kid. Mm -hmm. Period. It we is. are gonna have. We are gonna have. That is gonna be. <laughs> a whole that is gonna be another yeah, Definitely, like yeah, like you said, that's a whole nother topic. But you know what, a child who's not gonna destroy <laughs> these two kids that you have. <laughs> yeah. So. That's pretty much the app in the nutshell and the foundation is to hey progress at your own progression level is fine. We did it. Tasha's still in the sport. I, I me, mean, I lasted a long time. Like the longevity happens when you worry about yourself, focus on yourself, focus on your own time. You will get it. Like if I would have started running thinking like, damn, I should be running 49 with Tasha, like baby, that's her event. <laughs> you ran the 400, but if you wanted to really, if you really want to run 49, you will work for it. Like, that's just not going to happen if you just think that because other people are hitting those times, you should be hitting those times. It's not and as Tasha, easy as it looks. So, um, it is, let's be clear. Tasha's built for the 400. You built 100%. for the sprint. That also is a factor. And, and when you said telling these parents, let your kids try everything, we talked to Mike Powell, we talked to Gail Devers. Mike said he did six, six, six events in college. Gail yes, said she, she did, did eight. eight. Like, I, I started off as a multi-eventer slash eight slash 15 girl, ended up in the 400 hurdles. Tasha said she just was a 400. But I feel like... But that, if is, you that is my one regret, yeah. is that I didn't try other sports. And you see, you'll see a lot of these great athletes, we played a lot of different sports. Yeah. We, we played a lot of events because we were athletes first, and then we found our, we found our love. And exactly. that's how... I think that's the reason why we're able to last so long, because I'm doing what I love, mm -hmm. not what I was told... I would should do because my body type because no one would have put my short butt in the hurdles definitely not one girl <laughs> you know what i'm saying and i feel like parents need to understand that like let your kids if you could let your kids be athletes let your kids be yeah. athletes and then a lot of yes a lot of kids are specializing earlier and that's how you get over use injuries over trained over yep over everything so over it <laughs> right over it <laughs> i'm the only girl from my club team still running Same. Same. And, and they all started before me all were all were another, super thing, track. another thing that i'd like to point out is that on my track team there were girls that were actually better than me same had more raw talent than me same 
and I'm I'm the one that's still going. I'm the one that made it past college. Some of them didn't even make it into college. I I and knew dating this girl who couldn't wait to get to college so they could to quit. get away from their parents and their coaches. Like, and you, you don't, don't want this. No. <laughs> you don't want like, this. Like I'm going to get away from them. Like you don't want this. Like you do not want this. And that's I and I hear saying is like I love parents like my parents they invested in me mm-hmm. but it the passion came from me my because my 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 brother he don't like to work that's him like when it comes to sports he don't, he like my sister my sister remember that they just wanted to play on game day I was like I want to work my my dad said you want to train with course track coach my brother said no my dad said okay that's not for him I was a psychopath so they let me do psychopath stuff <laughs> Not and you do have to love track to be in it because it's a tough sport. It's a tough Come sport, on. and you do not know if it's not going to like. gonna yield that result that you're looking for. So you have to be strong to do to compete in track and field because it might not. You might train and train and train and train and train and never make a team, or ne- mm-hmm. I never made individuals. Like it, it, it. You have to be okay with that. Might happen to you. So track ain't for the weak at all. <laughs> when I'm saying track isn't fun, what I'm saying is when you're 40 years old, I doubt you're going to be meeting up at the track to do to do 400 repeats. But there are guys right yeah, now. There are some. I, I, where I train is, are some I but, but most basketball players, let's play a pickup game. Let's go yeah. play horse. Like, we don't scrimmage at practice. We go to, like, what we do <laughs> at practice is other sports punishment. Tyson, what camera? What is mini cam? What OnlyFans type? Mini cam, baby. You had what is these? This dark web. (laughs) Yo, can y'all hear me? Or nah? Yeah. We can't see you. What's what's popping? Oh, hold on. What's going on? What is mini cam? BK. I didn't do T. Reezy. I said I didn't do. What did I do to be able to get you? I love this. Tell y'all, the other day it was a 400 hurdle party, and I felt left out. Hold on, what's so it's, it's the, the global athletics party. Yeah. And, uh, I'm, I'm still in the, here's the thing is I get where I fit in. I still feel like I'm part of the crew. Okay, you can't you can't ostracize me. Man. Right. Global. My boy Mark had it. So what type of the dark web he's on? <laughs> um, <laughs> Tyson, I get can't hat messing with uh Tyson. The like situation we got going on. Okay, where where is my notes on Tyson Tyson Gay? Where is it in the document? Did I do? Did you delete my Tasha? I'm gonna fight you. Cause you'd be putting stuff in and everywhere on the document. I found it. I found okay. it. Tyson Gay, University of Arkansas. He has the American record with 969, um, and he's all actually tied for the second fastest man over 100 meters with Johan Blake. Um, he has. In 2007, in Osaka the World Championships, he got gold in the 100, 200, and the 4x1. He's the second man to win all three at a World Championships. Maurice Green did it first, and Bolt did it after. He has a 2009 World Championship silver in the 100 um, in the Berlin World Championships. He is a four-time U.S. champ in the 100, and he is a blank screen on our <laughs> on our show. <laughs> But welcome, welcome to Track Girl Summer, and y'all better put some respect on my dog Tyson Gay's name. You hear me? We were talking earlier about um, how in the U.S. we've always had there's always been the king of the sprint that like that dude, and for a long time it was Tyson Gay. Tyson Gay was that dude, like, and I feel like we're we're trying to figure out who who's gonna sit on the throne um, next. But Tyson, Tyson, you have any thoughts? Tyson had a seat and stayed there for a while. We can't even hear our dog no more. Tyson, you there? Someone sent an Amber Alert out for Tyson Gay. My man's got the mini cam, though. I'm trying to figure this one out. <laughs> what is this mini cam? I- well, while we get him back on, on the screen, let's, uh, let's, let's introduce-, introduce the next segment. Oh, like like the, the predictions, like the hustle clean whole thing, or do you want to? I thought we were just gonna introduce the fact. <laughs> Guys, bear with us. Okay, so we're gonna be doing our hustle clean clean 
podium predictions. Bianca already knows how it's good. We didn't pick who's who is on each team. Who, who's are you team? Was, I'm gonna pick. Yeah, Bianca Jeremy today. told me last night that they can run. Oh, you throwing shade on my dog, Reezy? I just don't know if he's gonna show up, so I I need some assistance. All right. Be I know ready. Bianca's in the in the chat right now, um, <laughs> but um, our predictions are sponsored by Hustle Clean. Hustle Clean is a mission driven self care brand for active lifestyle. Products are sold nationwide in Walmart and Target. It's athlete and black owned. Go to hustleclean.com and enter TGS for a ten percent discount on all products. Thanks. Get in the hustle and get clean. It's not their logo, but I say it. Um, aye, aye, aye. and we're going to be talking the men's four by one and the women's four by one. Do we want to start with the women's four by one and what I think about it? Or do you want to start with the men's four by one? And I'll tell you what I think about that. We can start with either one. They both same boat. So what you mean they both in the same boat? One because one is still one still has, has an still, opportunity. One's still a, one's still at sea. Okay, one's still growing. <laughs> but it's, it's a shaky boat. Yeah, that boat rocking though. So but I, <laughs> why are we like this? <laughs> you know why I'm like, you might not be it's not that it's it's really not their fault though. Um did you it's, guys see um Canada's interview? Canada's media yes. did we? They do some shade. This but, was a shade. That was but is it shade if it's I just want to say, but is it, is it shade if it's the truth? Like, I mean. Someone wants to know what they said. They basically they said, said that we ain't practice. been practicing. <laughs> this, we didn't practice. Like, the commentator asked how they feel about the men not advancing. And they said, I mean, so we were practicing. They just didn't they weren't practicing they, they need more practice or whatever and the whole topic of discussion around not going into training camp which i know and it's been a couple of people that work for usa track and field that has been defending um them not going over early but unless you plan on telling us the, lo the logical reason behind doing that then the athletes were not at uh the first the forethought of deciding not to go over there and we don't yes. care. <laughs> That's my thing. Um, even if you have, even if you had practice, in my humble, non-relay -re running opinion, I don't think they got their legs right. No, they got no, completely wrong. Completely wrong. Because I get why you. Okay, we're gonna talk about the men's. Tyson. Crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta see. Yeah, Tyson, this year's question. Yeah. Came up. Tyson, Tyson, Yo, you right now? Okay. What you, you using? Hear That's what I want to know. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. What you saying? I said, what you using to moisturize that beard? It's looking strong. It's looking healthy. It's looking shiny. <laughs> there you go. I want to put a little, you feel me, a little, you know, juices and berries. Nothing much, though. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Where, where the chains at? I was expecting to see the Mr. T chains. Hey, you ain't got the chains. This is all business, man. We got to talk business, man. See what's going on with our people, man, out there in the streets. You know, they can't work. Come on, let me see my shirt. You see, I'm trying to represent. You feel me? No. Oh, that flag look okay. a little suspect, though. That ain't Team USA flag. No, it ain't Team USA flag, but it's still the colors. You dig? It's from 2012. Y'all know the vibes. <laughs> That boy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, man. I really do. <laughs> so we get so we get into this this four at one. I just stated I don't think on the men's or the women's side they got the legs right. Okay, mm -hmm. but despite all, let's forget the practice. Let's forget the handoffs. But the handoffs is part of the reason why the legs are wrong. The legs weren't right. I get that you put Fred Curley on the second leg because it's four hundred meters of strength. But why would you put a man? Who's used to the 400 giving and taking the baton? Put that man on anchor where he belongs. Tyson's like, yeah. my, my I'm other, not even sure I would have run him in a preliminary round. Period. Who? But who else would? Who, why did you take over Michael Williams? Why is he over there? The boy from Oregon is a dog. Why was he not on that relay? 
what, well, well, so what? that that was gonna be my question, right? About like what legs were available because the argument is that a and I agree that Fred shouldn't be taking and giving the stick because even if you look, Fred was placing the baton before he even saw a target. You gotta see the target. With timeout, let's rewind. Proper, proper handoff technique. I'm gonna get it from Bianca and Tyson. You run in. You need to see a target. Someone says stick, hand out big target, then you then place you it. Place the baton. Let's right. be clear. Fred's over here running. Stick. Oh, that slows down. That slows you yes. down, and you don't have a strong target. So let's just be clear. That's why we said the handoffs were messed up. But um, and and also Fred didn't have good placement, so we we didn't get to see the first handoff. But you saw that Fred had to adjust the stick. He didn't get a, a good handoff. And also, it is it is the incoming runner's responsibility to make sure that the baton is placed properly. So there's right. that. Can you explain what, what you mean by he doesn't have a good hand, hand? He had the baton in the middle of the baton. He and hold it and at the bottom. that's with having adjusted it. So even by the time he handed it off, he still didn't have oh, much okay. stick to give to Baker. So like you should be getting it, you should be getting at it at the bottom part of it. Yeah, you can hand it off like this. Right, you got it here in the middle, so there's no place for you to hand off to the next person. Exactly. We need a, we should have got a baton. We should have had a baton. Um, but the the point that I want to make is that, or the question that I had, which I guess Bianca kind of answered, because my my thing is, although I agree that Fred should have been anchor leg as opposed to second leg for the for the situation that we just described i don't know that switching the four legs that ran would have made the difference in making the final and i say, say switching, that switching, switching in order and i say that because the anchor leg despite despite having the stick problems they ran away and on this yeah. level we can't hide and well, that's because we had it wrong from the beginning we had the wrong from the beginning. Go ahead. Break it down. For it's me. a relay coach's responsibility to look at that personnel and decide. You never want to. Every athlete, if you ask them to run, they're going to say yes, and they're going to do it because they want to be out there on the track. Want to be out there on the track. It's your, it's your responsibility as the relay coach to say, hey, man, I really, really want to put you out there, but – I'm going to have to go with somebody else just because I want to do what's in the best interest of the team. I love Trayvon, but everybody with eyes can see that's not the same Trayvon that came. The same one we've been seeing all year is not the same one that ended up in Tokyo. And it could be for anything. His Achilles could be bothering him. Um, mentally, something could be bothering him. Yes. Um, He's had a lot of injuries. Yeah, and, and they happen at major championships. It could be a mental block at the major championships because he's always gotten hurt when he got there. It could be so many things, but whatever it is, he is not given what he was all year. So you make a conscious decision as a coach, and you go forget that he runs nine seven. He run. He's amazing out of the blocks. That's not who you have out there right now. Call up Michael Williams, or when you see this in the hundred rounds, you had like five days to say, "Hey, man, we got to come up with something else because we got to figure out who we gonna put on it, put on that first leg." Ronnie Baker, why do you have him on third leg at all? He needs a right. second leg. Why are you putting Ronnie Baker on third leg? Who told y'all to do this? Why? <laughs> why? Like it? It is just it's. And the frustration, this is how I know that they felt the same way, is because they were all very upset. They couldn't even finish their interview. One athlete walked off. That's like, should be. And I, I want to be, be clear that what we're saying here is no disrespect to the, the yeah. men that we're here. Yeah, ran. it's the coaches. It's so the trust me, it's a relay coach. <laughs> bad strategy, bad coaching. So basically, Natasha's saying it's the U.S. relay coaches. Um, Tyson, I want to I want to hear your thoughts on it because you we just kind of <laughs> and look I got all into it and I, I'm not even a four by one specialist but I I, I know them batons I know them. I'm taking the baton. I know how to give, give and take and I know that wasn't right. So really, I mean, really um, to be honest with you, I I've been on one good relay team and the rest of them been horrible to me. I've had some bad luck. Beyonce, I mean I said Beyonce, Bianca <laughs> is uh. You know the expert, I think, in the in the four by one. 
But I, I personally believe you need leadership when it comes out there. The time that I did, okay. the, time that, the time that we did win, um, I think I had some uh, leadership. When I gave the, the stick to uh, Leroy, he was nervous. Uh, he wasn't. Um, Shout out to the he, game. He was, he, he, he was just nervous. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, the prelims didn't go well. So when the finals came, it was more like um, I just had to tell him, man, I'm going to get you the stick. Just go. And I, I calmed him down. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I, I to stop right there. I'm sorry, because I just want to point out that Leroy Dixon, although a Gamecock, this is no disrespect, he was not a top sprinter. But what you're saying is as a leader, you elevated him enough to believe mm -hmm. and go right. out and get the job. Because, yeah, at the time we had one – I want to say we had two or three sprinters go down. So, you know, that they just moved up on the chain. So um, whoever's going to be the leader for the U.S., um, and I'm not talking about coaches because I believe uh, coaches are one thing, but whoever's going to be the leader of the of the, the U.S., the men's football one, it's always a big dog. No matter – out of all those guys, it's always a big dog. If Fred has came down from the 400 and has took over the 100, as we see it right now, right? These are just facts. Mm -hmm. If he's going to be the big dog, he has to be the one to step up and say, hey, this is how it's going to go. This is what leg I want to run. This is what I think. And the guys have to come together and give each other's opinion. Because we've done that once before, even though we still have bad luck. The coach gave us the permission to say, hey, you guys put it together. What you want to do? I said, hey, Crawford, what you want to do? You know, what leg you feel like you're the best at? Crawford said, I think I'm the baddest MF alive on third leg. You know, so then. I know he said that too. Crawford, you understand? Sean Crawford, you know what I'm saying? This is the gold medalist talk. So we're in the group. He says, I think I'm the baddest MF on third leg. And so in my in my brain, my brain burst was like, I think I'm the baddest MF on third leg, right? So I wasn't running the prelims, but he ended up running. I think he gave the darkest pattern, I think. It still was some type of mishap, and we didn't make it through. But we all was relaxed. We just made a mistake. Somehow, some way, it didn't work. Bad luck. I don't know what it is. But someone has to take control of the relay, and it's not going to be the coaches because we've had different coaches, different staff for years. So I believe that we have to find a coach who is the relay coach. Like, um, and it's no distance to any of the coaches, but yeah, the athletes have, have to get the sticker uh, around the track. We have to get the sticker around the track. That's what it is. So I ain't blaming the coaches, but we have to get the sticker around the track as the athletes first. They can put us out there, but we got to get the job done. But I believe one of these college coaches, I don't know if it's Henry. I don't know if it's um, Shaver. I don't know which college coaches, you know what I'm saying, are out there. They have so much experience. They have to run four by ones every year, all type of meets. You know what I'm saying? SECs, uh, regional, nationals. They have the experience. And I believe we need a dedicated coach with that type of expertise because they do it so much. And let them just take over. Put the pride well, aside. Right do we know? I, I was told Wallace. I was told Wallace Spearman is the coach. That's what I was told. Yeah. And I didn't know if that was true. I don't know if it's true either. But let me tell but you I something. But I did hear this. Michelle Lewis posted on I Instagram. I know Michelle is a girl. And I, it's very clear. I, I felt like she was making it very clear that I'm the women's relay coach, and I ain't got nothing to do with going what, what's can, going on on the Can I say side. something? And it might it might be controversial. I really feel like. Looking at the legs that we had, and the 100 boys weren't giving what they supposed to get. Y'all should have gone digging up in the 200. And I know, and I know Tasha said they just ran the 200, and they might have been tired. But Andre, but somebody but the, posted, yeah, the grass like got that. his little butt up, ran the, all the rounds of the 100, got his yeah. butt on the podium of the 100, got his butt on the podium of the 200. And real championship runners are ready to run another round for the four by one. And I, but I, but I also think that it rests in also what was said earlier about team USA counting medals before actually going out there. I think we rested in, we're going to make final Canada didn't have the legs to choose from. We always mm -hmm. say our blessing and our curse is that we have so many, we could put anybody out there. And I think that's what we did. Well, right. that's, that, put anybody that is out not there, working no more. Instead of calling on, walk down by right. Japan. Instead no, of calling no on, to Japan. We to call on whether you tired or not. Because I'm and, taking a tired Noah Lyles. Because I know Noah Lyles will give me. That's when, uh, I believe that's when leadership comes into play. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I understand coaches get credit for putting the team together, but mm -hmm. that's when leadership 
whether it's Noah, Noah is the next great American sprinter. He has to say, hey, I'm going to run. But I know it's sometimes it's tough for people to come down off that, that mental high, that mental high winning or getting third or second, and you're with family and you're, you're excited and you're tired. But you have to find leadership, whether it's Noah, Fred, Ronnie, um, or Trayvon, whoever it is, someone has to be a leader. You and you already doing, they don't want to put night. Like, the, the last successful team. relay team I had was, um, I think it was Bahamas Relay. It was myself and Gatlin. I want to say Mike and um, Ryan Bailey, I, I think. Um, mm-hmm. That's and we were talking about, you know, we had relay practice and all that stuff. But when it boiled down to it, we all had to discuss, I think it was Gatlin. He just took leadership. You understand what I'm saying? He took leadership. Now, his, 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 um, I think it was um, his, uh, what was it, his, what's it called when you're trying to get people hype? Bravado, confidence. Um, yeah, his, uh, like when you're getting able, I don't know. But anyway, his uh, motivational, his motivational uh, thing okay. before the break, right? He basically was like, look, guys, we're about to go out here and do the damn thing. We're about to whoop these guys. And at the end of it, he was like, look, man, we got kids to feed. And we all kind of just laughed. You know what I'm saying? We looked around and we're like, damn, we all do got kids. But we all just laughed. We're like, hell yeah, we got to feed these kids. And it just broke the ice. It wasn't no nervousness. It was just like, all right, let's have fun. And we went out there and kicked ass. You know what I'm saying? It was just about having fun. So someone just has to take leadership. Like I said, for Noah, whoever, because I didn't run the prelims uh, when we won one year. But I ran four rounds of the 100 and four rounds of the 200. So I had to take a day off. You know what I'm saying? But if you're only running a few races, you can run one more race. You know, so... Like you said, we have so many options, and I think our ego is so big from years of being so successful and being the most talented, but we don't win because of our options. So we have to take leadership or find a designated coach that practices and, and understands the egos and put everybody in the right position and let people be comfortable where they want to be comfortable at. Because I see that if you have three nine eights on a 4 by one team, it ain't guaranteed you're going to win, but you should be in the finals. So to me, I feel like they stack the relay up, put the three fastest first, and they put the fourth fastest uh, last because they want to give him the lead. But unfortunately, he didn't get the lead because of he never was in the lead. So that's my thing. I think they were trying to stack it up and then yeah. get him the lead so he can hold on, but he never had it. Like we see colleges do that all the time. They put the person who's not the fastest last going to get in the lead. So I think it just didn't work. You know, I don't know what happened with the sticks. But Craig came in to go run a monster leg right i we got to get into our hustle clean podium picks but i also want to just say breezy the people don't know you for being a talker and i just appreciate you for showing up and all your glory <laughs> and all your knowledge and letting the people see you see this tyson gay because this is the tyson that we me and bk know but everybody else oh. doesn't get this and shout out to you for dropping these gems on us well, now with the men out of the contention. Um, we starting off with men or women? Which one? I didn't put a W or an M up well, there. We haven't even talked about the women because I'm going to tell you why I don't like the women's. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to tell you why I don't like the women's lineup either. All right. So then let's start off with the men. men. The men, I got, uh, I got China. I got China winning that thing. China has always been very, because y'all don't, y'all have, if you've been paying attention to any championships, China is always right there always japan got did japan they made the podium last world championship they sure did last last olympic podium last olympics japan was who my eyes was on actually but you paid us semis jamaica look good they look good for the men i think jamaica canada also look good who canada oh yeah canada canada do look good they do look good I forgot about that. So who who went in with the number one time? I look that up right now. I can I I, love I think it was actually Jamaica. That's why I was like I was, I had Jamaica and Canada. I thought well, that's, that, that's the thing to touch on Jamaica. They have one veteran on the team. That's Johan. He ran third leg if I'm not mistaken, and he could have had pride, ego, and said, "Hey, it's my last Olympic. I'm running ankle." You know what I'm saying? That's but, the type of leadership you need, though. Yeah, yeah but he but he obviously um. Got his team together and they got through. They made it to the final. You got to make it to the fight. Exactly. There's no reason why Michael Rogers should not be in Tokyo right now. I don't care what's going on. Michael Rogers should be in Tokyo. 
Because but I don't think he made the I don't think he made the final. It don't it don't this. matter. Our federation need to come up with a different system and be able to how you gonna have leadership over there is if you oh well we're just going by the book. If Johan uh, didn't make didn't uh, make right. their final in their one hundred and two hundred, he would still be in Tokyo. They were still gonna take okay. it. Oh yeah, we definitely have different different rules yeah, and we just and, have a different approach as oh well we gotta take these people and they gotta take these. You taking a whole bunch of people over there who ain't never ran with each other before. How you gonna gain leadership and confidence and chemistry and something that they trying to figure you trying to figure it out on the fly, then on top of all of that, you skip training camp. Okay, could have been getting to know each other. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm gonna give Elaine assignment. I will sit and have this conversation all day. But. Yeah, I don't care about the, the, the line of the show. Um in lane two, we've got Ghana. They are in 3808. Lane three, Germany, 3802. Lane four, Canada, 3764. Lane five, Jamaica, 3684. I'm like, I don't know why we're talking about China when Jamaica ran 36. Um, Great Britain ran 37, 30, 36. They're in lane six. Lane seven is China, 3779. Eight is Italy, 3795. And nine is Japan, 3743. Mm. Whoa. I, I, um, I, I, Bianca, but I ain't putting China can make the podium, but I don't think they they outdo it. They, they probably won't win it, but one thing about it, if anybody make a mishap on them pass out and on them hands out, oh, China yeah, ain't gonna be the top. So, um, but given know. what you just said, I think I think Jamaica can hold on because they do have Johan Blake on their team. Um, and I think he is going to give them the confidence because their other kid, I think they have, like, I think the last leg, one of those legs on there are really, really young. Like, they just got out of high school. Um, I remember he was at Penn Relays last year. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they did. They had a young leg. Yeah, I think he went was a very young young team, team. But I, also, I also think Canada's getting on the podium purely for the DeGrasse factor. <laughs> purely for the DeGrasse factor. Like, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, at this point, I. Like, let me let me make a public announcement. Andre, I am sorry. <laughs> because we keep putting your name somewhere and then not, and then disrespecting by not actually putting you on the podium. I'm putting your team on because you've been doing oh, wrong. Yeah. Like, get on the podium. Those times that you read were the season's best. Those times were not for this race. Jamaica had the fastest time, 3782, then China, 3792. Oh, this is the same. Miss information. This is the PBs, not the, the season best. best. My bad. My bad. Also, Charmaine, to your point about um, Jamaica leaving McLeod home, they left McLeod home because third place was Parchment. So they the the le- the place that they can change is the third place. They weren't gonna um, leave Parchment home. I made a mistake. Calm down. Mr. No misinformation. That's what it is. See then. Honest I would have been, been like, oh well, oh my bad. Tasha did that to me last week. Well, last week or two days ago. Thirty-seven ninety-two. Jamaica thirty-seven eighty-two. Great Britain thirty-eight oh two. Canada thirty-seven ninety-two. Italy thirty-seven ninety-five. Japan thirty-eight sixteen. My bad. I apologize. Those are the season best. Jamaica still has the fastest time coming in, and I still feel like they can. I still am picking Jamaica for the top spot, unless Bianca says otherwise. No, I think Jamaica, Jamaica, Canada, China, Jamaica. That's Canada. what I got. That's what y'all locking in. JCC. What y'all got, Tyson? What y'all got? What did you say? Jamaica, China, Canada, or Canada, China? Canada, Canada. China. I don't know, man. It's gonna be close. I don't know. It's, it's gonna be close. Game. It's gonna be that a break and finish. DeGrasse gonna have yeah. to walk some people down. I already know that. We saw Great Britain. Great Britain came through too, didn't they? And they well, have they got- seen a tether team for four years straight. Did GB come through? GB, GB wasn't really that impressive to me, honestly. But I feel like we got a couple of people injured, but at this point. Hmm? What'd you say, Reezy? Oh. So they got a couple people who injured, but I don't want to count them out. You never know, man. Tyson, can I also call you GB? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer that. <laughs> I'm okay. What y'all got? Man, you, you the you the team leader. You came in here talking about team leaders. I'm taking your lead, so call it. I don't, man. I don't know, man, because I'm still, I'm still confused. Um, <laughs> 
Listen, I did not know we dropped our way back to sixth place either, so I'm definitely confused. I we've so, never made a final. So and at first I had a I had to re relook on like, oh, we didn't make the, make the final and I was like, Did we drop it? And then I was like, Oh, we just didn't make the we final. just didn't make the final. Yeah. I think that's probably the first time we've ever actually finished a race and didn't make it to the finals. Yeah, the time Any wasn't time fast. Running out of the they zone, definitely should have made the finals, but it just I I, I don't know because nobody really I don't know how you, you have three nine eights. I know they don't always mean the best, but hell, Jamaica had all those nine sixes and nine sevens on their team, and our nine, sticks are moving. Our and they didn't have good six either. They just got it around. Ten five. All right, but we got to do our prediction. We we still in shock. Team USA is not there. Right, I got it. Uh, I got it. Um, <laughs> Wind dated on the as they like no shade, no tea. I got um who I got. I got Canada, Great Britain, and uh, and Jamaica. Okay, I like that. I like that. That don't look bad. That don't look bad. I just, I just don't think China gonna let their let they got that that nine eight boy on there, and I think they got another sub ten on China. So they got two sub tens along with their pristine handoff. So I'm I locking just, this in because we don't have time to. Yeah, we can lock that in. I'm confident on that. Breezy, I wonder. Get to get to it. Breezy. Yo. We locked in. I'm locked in. I just want to make sure you got it. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna say this for everybody to hear. Tiana Daniels earned the right to be the anchor leg for the four by for the women's four by one. She is the only U.S. finalist in the Olympics this year. She was the only U.S. finalist in the World Championship last year. She won. She won USA's in 2019. She technically, was she carry out? She won the Olympic trial. I don't know if that how that no, works. It's not technically. She's the U.S. She was, she was, champ. She was trial champ. She and I don't think she needs to be on that long second leg. I think she needs to be the anchor. I leg. think second leg. Is Gabby right. needs to be, we discussed this already. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I knew know <laughs> that Tiana needs to be anchor legs. That's why I do know. What do y'all what do think about the women's order? I think the people that are supposed to be on relay are know. the ones who have chemistry with each other. I don't think nobody uh, deserves to be on a relay. That's just my uh, opinion on relays. Um, I think the four people who has the best chemistry, and sometimes that's not going to be your person that made a team outright in a hundred. Sometimes that's not going to be the favorite or the person who um, people feel like should be on there. Sometimes it's going to be that person that you grab from another event that's, that came down on relay duty. And I'm speaking from the fact two years, that was me. Mm -hmm. So I know that chemistry is more important than how we feel or how that athlete feels. Um, you're right. Second leg is not where she should be. If she's going to be on the relay. I've given the baton to, I've given the baton to Tiana. She makes it very easy for someone who should not be on anyone's four by one. She makes it very no, easy. No, I didn't say she wasn't supposed to be on there. I said nobody, meaning there's nobody on a 100 meter or 200 meter team who before you get there and before you do stick passes and before you see who all you got and what you got to work with, you say, oh, this person's supposed to be on there. And that is what Team USA does. We already picked who's going to be on there before is we even see. Like leg. Yeah, no, she's, if she's yeah. going to be on there, then she do need to be last. If they're going to put her on there, she can be last. She shouldn't be in second leg. So just just so that we could, uh, the women's four by one in the free limbs ran Oliver to Daniels to English to Hobbs. I do like English on a relay. English is a dog. Tyson and see, and see that's, but that's the issues though. Jenna Prandini should have been on that leg. Jenna should have been right there. She's probably going to rest they for the rest 200. Hey, I, I, listen, I, I, feel like, I feel like one thing we're missing is politics. Mm -hmm. That plays a big factor on who gets some of those spots. So even though like you say, nobody, you say, just deserves to be on the relay. Like you say, we need chemistry and all that stuff. Politics uh, politics plays a big role, too, man. You have coaches vouching for the athletes. You have uh, relay coaches. You have 
I mean, you just have a lot of stuff. You have shoe companies putting their bids in. Everybody you know, wants to get a medal because it's like it's technically supposed to be the easiest way to get one. So um, I, I believe politics has. I don't know who's running the final. Y'all have the final list or no? Yeah. Well, we saw Jenna and Gabby practicing. So my, well, they're, my, they're assumption, great, they're like, my assumption would be that they're coming on. But Tyson, if you could pick anyone and pick the order, what are you doing? I'm going. Um, who's in the final? Tiana, uh, I'm going. Tiana, she she gonna be on it for show. Um, what leg? Tiana, I only see her running uh, last or second. Not second. Not second. You 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 gonna put her over Gabby on that long back stretch? You gonna put it over Jenna? No, I, think Gabby, I think Gabby can run the hell of a curve too. No, she not. I'm not paying attention. I don't know. She no, can't. she can't. She's gonna indoor still. She can. Bianca. And O'Girl got, O'Girl got the best star. Oliver got the best star, right? Yeah. Yeah, she's she first gonna, lead hands down. She's going to pop it off. Oh, yeah. okay, I got you. She may pop it off, and then she may give it to Gabby, and mm-hmm. then Prandini, oh. and then Tiana, possibly. That's, that's my order. That's my order. Oh, okay. That's, that's, a nice, that's, that's a nice team. Bianca disagrees. Bianca, let's hear your... your no, your, no, it's not that I disagree. Um, oh, someone said oh, Oliver. Oliver. I messed up, my bad. Chance. You're right. I should be coming through with the facts. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely yeah. Oliver popping off a hundred percent. Giving it to Gabby, giving it to Prandini, giving it to Tiana. Oh, okay. I think that is safe. Thank you. I, knew, yep. I think that matching Gabby up on the back stretch with Elaine makes sense. Mm. Um, I think that if it get into a foot race with Brianna, because if I'm Jamaica, I'm putting Brianna Williams, even though she ran first leg for them in the prelims, I'm putting her on last leg in the final, and I'm putting Shelly back on pop off. That's what I would do. I'm not sure if they're going to do that, but that's what I would do. I would do from Shelly to Elaine to Sharika to Brianna. That's what I would do for them. I write this down, too. But who knows? But if it comes in a foot race, for one, let's just say nobody's running with a lane. Let's just put that out there. It don't matter who we put where. She can't hide her thing right now. So, but Exposed. I think a better matchup for her is Gabby, Gabby on that back stretch, and just put Tiana on last leg. I think that's safer. And Prandini. But that's right. tough. That's tough, man. Especially <laughs> when you got. I mean, because you say if you you say if you look at somebody and they're not this. I mean, I think you said this, Bianca. Tell me if I got this right. You said if you look at somebody and they're not who they say they they was at USA's. No, no, no. Run- I said that Trayvon failed to make the um final the in, right? in the hundred final, and it was. And like I said, I don't know if he's hurt. I don't know what's going on with him. But in the interview, he was just saying like when he was trying to hit his gears, they just weren't there. They just, oh, okay. I didn't know he said so, that. Okay, so, so it's more so um, our athletes got over right. there and they were really, really flat. They seemed really jet lagged and all of that. So it seems that not coming over early and getting acclimated affected some of the athletes. Right. Like what about so, well, so what about the women? Do you feel like any women, of the women didn't didn't show with the up? Women, with the women, they did look a little flat. A lot of them look flat. Jenna looks very, she looks very flat. Jenna Prandini looks flat. She don't, she because, was, I mean, if she's on the relay, I know she's not hurt. So this, this is barring nobody's running hurt because we know that athletes will get out there and run hurt just because they want to be out there. But assuming none of them are actually hurt, they look more flat than anything. Like they just don't have their gears that they had at you. Okay. I, I would argue you take Jenna off that third leg and put an English or Aaliyah. That's English a good idea. Aaliyah mm. didn't look that hot to me. Well, who then who who looks who looks? I feel like I feel like the four that we named is the best. It's the best. That we have. Yeah, it's, it's as good as it's gonna get. What are you doing off camera? Cause I'm sorry, I was gonna change the battery. I wish I'm still gonna do, but um. Okay. Oh, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of women to choose from. A lot of talent. A lot, like, okay, even Bianca knows you could not make the team. I've been in this position. I didn't make the team in 16, but when I got over there doing relay camp, 
I look yeah. better than I did at trial. So they're like, yeah, we can't deny Tyson and Gallus chemistry because Tyson getting out Gallus doing you see what I'm saying? So it was still there. Some there, people can still Yeah, so some people doing relay practice, they can show they can show they look better than someone who who didn't make the finals or did make the finals. They can actually look better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can look yeah. better. I mean, your point about Sharika was definitely walking down Hobbs. So that that actually like corrects English. me because Sharika is 10 8, okay? So, 10 7. 10, 7. So, that's Sharika made Aaliyah look bad. <laughs> Not necessarily that Aaliyah didn't look. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. That, like, so I, 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 I'll take wasn't that running correction. Bad. You, well, you just Aaliyah, think, think, about, but think about what Aaliyah going over there with. That crap that happened at USA, she should, she probably, mentally, she might not even really just be over there for real. Like, so. You gotta take into okay, that's what that's what that's where it goes back to tie to Tyson with the leadership from the top down, the coaches and the athletes that are around that can actually look at their athletes and determine like, I don't know, man, we need to come up with we need to figure this out as a team. Like the chemistry and I, athletes I don't know. willing to say I'm not ready. The two thousand seven I was on that four by four and Orrin Richburg, who me and him don't have the best uh relationship anymore. But in 2007, he was ready to put me on that final. And I said, look, I don't have it. I didn't make it out of the semis. I didn't feel great in that prelim. I'm not going to do this, do that to my team. I was only 21, fresh fresh out of just That's signed my I professional uh, yeah. contract. So I got, but they're I not going to do that. But I'm not going to put my team on the line knowing that I don't feel the best and going out integrity, there. And that's integrity, and that's actually being, so, you're, not self, you're being non-selfish. <laughs> Putting your pride to the side is huge because, like you, like Bianca said, a lot of people are not going to do it. If they feel a tweet, they're, they're going to do whatever they got to do to get their medal. The coaches are going to keep it a secret if they hurt. They ain't going to tell nobody. They're going to do whatever they got to do to get that athlete a medal. I remember that. that. See, people need to hear that story. Athletes need to hear that story so we can so they can understand we have to do what's best for the team. All right, I got one. I got one question. So. I was gonna ask y'all who we got. Let we, me let me change this battery because we we going but keep over talking. today. <laughs> What's your question, Ty? All right, my question is this: Would you guys, considering that we do have, we still have a good team out there, right? Yeah. With the women, we have a good team, yeah. especially based on names and personal best and stuff. We have a good team yeah. out there. Would you guys, considering Jamaica is the top dog, right? Mm -hmm. Would you guys? Fly in to carry on a private jet <laughs> and let her come in and, and do her thing and show up. Would y'all do that? No. I put Allison on before that. <laughs> no. Allison on the relay? Allison. Allison. Not. She should yeah, she... her, but I not not that I've seen. But no, I, I don't think the schedule. But she's not in the pool. Allison got to run that four hundred later. She, I don't think she, she, she had the four hundred final. So she can't do it because of the schedule. Got other stuff to do. Allison got a private jet back to Cammy soon, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, I get it. But I'm asking, would you guys do that? No, he said not spirit. Get Shakira. Because, because it's not like you said, it's not the it's not the speed that we're missing. <laughs> yeah, we need we're the... not missing the speed. Yeah, she but if she was over there, she'd be just she'll just be over there in the same predicament that we in. She'll still have to walk well, somebody down. And I don't know how the, the chemistry I know what I'm saying. That do you think that, that guarantees a medal? Do you think with the team that we're gonna put out there, it's all about getting top three. Jamaica yeah. can fumble the stick, anything can happen. We all know this, anything can happen. But as it looks, Jamaica should win by a by a large amount. They should. But where's the for Cody think, with the team? Everybody? With all the women we have out there, do you think that they will be top three? I'm gonna say no, and I'm, I'm gonna, here's why I'm gonna say no. Because one thing that we have been harping on over and over and over is about chemistry, mm -hmm. chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. And when I say this, please nobody misconstrue what it is that I'm saying, because I enjoy the spiciness of it all. But some of the things that she's been tweeting leads me to believe. How does that fit into the chemistry of the team? Oh, you're talking yeah. about Shakira. Right. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, I enjoy the spiciness of it all. I've said that before. I'm a Carrie fan. But if we're over here talking about uh, chemistry, 
And a lot of those tweets have been throwing shade at her own teammates and competitors. I don't know how how we so and also and she broke the rules. And, so and it, it's, we ain't got no time to do practice. And we have no time to do practice. Yeah, it's a non starter. So, I don't think nobody's having time to really practice, really. Like, I don't think nobody had relay camp this year, I don't think. Oh, you ain't got to think. We definitely didn't. A hundred percent. No, we didn't. Eat, we, we're talk, we're, we, the, another thing that we skipped over, we've been talking about camp, but we haven't been talking about, we at least have Penn relays, Texas relays, Mount Sac relays. We have the opportunity to run some relays Texas throughout relays. the years, and we didn't have any of that this year. So it's, yeah. it's an accumulation of lack of opportunity to, to compete and train as a relay. I read well. an article that say, they said they did handoffs. They had five practices. Five. <laughs> hey, I believe the U.S. <laughs> I believe the women. I believe Jamaica, okay. the U.S. Okay. And I want to say I'm going to go Germany. I want to put Great Britain on there, but I'm like, I don't know if Dina's hamstring's going to last. Like, she made it through. Girl, she made please. It. She blazed it. <laughs> Third leg, she looked good. Dana looked good. Dana looked Maybe good. She got I don't, treatment. I don't good. know. Tyson, Tyson, we sure about this? I don't know if I'm comfortable leaving Great Britain off. No, don't be trying to take my little insight. No, no, no. And then put it on. No, because you ride it. You said you riding with your partner. I am riding with my you partner. You take my information but, and my but, insight. No, no, no. <laughs> Great Britain did a national record in the prelim. Who did? And then he must be, be nasty. Oh yeah, Great yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had a national yeah. record. In they, they, they look good. They look good. They look All I want to do is USA, Great Britain. What do you think? You want to do Jamaica, what? USA. Okay. Jamaica, Great Britain, USA. Okay. I just am a little concerned because while Great Britain has, because, you know, they they have their Great relay. Great Britain got some good stick passes because them girls been running together for a minute. So I yeah, stick passes in some cases can be more. But my my than... concern is I Dina look good, but will she stay looking good? I think so. I'll, Dina don't strike me as the type of person that to go out there if she felt unfit. Well, she didn't. She scratched out of the two hundred. She so. scra- exactly. She scratched out of it because she didn't. So feel she, right. she, she nice and fresh. Who scratched out? Dina. 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 Her hands. Oh, she, 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 her probably done that. she probably done that for relay contention. Yeah, the, period. The fact, yeah. the fact that they came out and broke their national record. To oh, yeah. They've been working. Okay, well, them. okay. I'll, I'll put them in third then. But Germany, it was a toss between them and Germany. I'm going to put them in third. Put an ass. I hate us so much. We can't ever make decisions. <laughs> The Swiss look good too. You know, one of they girls uh is sub ten. They got two um, sub ten. Sub eleven. And um, that other girl. Oh yeah. The Swiss got a good team. They really got they got a really really good team. I'm gonna put our asterisk for the Swiss then. Y'all get to have Germany as fourth. We get Swiss as fourth. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's, 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 it's tough. I'm locking this in though because we got twelve minutes to to do it in in a case of. Tyson just come back is what I decided. Yeah, because Tyson. I mean, executive decision. I want to be leadership on this couch. <laughs> like Bianca, Tyson has a wealth of things that we, we can and need to talk about. So we're going to talk to you for a little bit, but we're going to definitely bring you back. All right, sounds good. Okay, we locked in for a hustle clean podium pick so the women's four by one. And the um, men's 401. Men's We're going to be posting it on Twitter so you can um, do a little poll. People watching, you can vote whether you team Tyson, team Bianca. I ain't taking credit for nothing right now because I don't even know what's going on. Um, and now we're going to... Bianca, thank you so much for coming today again. Thank you for dropping you, the gym. Insight. Us two days out of the week for you. I'm going to be mm-hmm. uh, back Back on Twitter with you watching these these races. Also, I, I would like to apologize to Natasha. That's why I took you as my teammate because I would never throw you on the bus like Tasha did on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, about uh, what the grass. 
I listen, I ain't throw you under the bus. I just wanted to say that I was being a team player. And you like, no, I want to put the little. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just go ahead and put right. it. I let my body get in the way of that one. You right. I'm just saying that she don't want no smoke from Nia Ali. And she was like, before I see me in these streets, let me just tweet out that I'm Team DeGrasse. That's what I feel like was happening. What and like. she threw me on the bus to do that. All right. I'm, I'm no, that's you. fine because I definitely said he would break up the sweep, so I didn't have him just he had not him all the he didn't aware. Yeah, I had him up there. I just didn't. I wanted us to sweep that thing. So, I mean, we swept. He just no, that's not a swept sweep. us a little bit back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was still it was kind of a sweep, kind of. <laughs> okay, Bianca, thank you so much for coming. Make sure you follow Bianca Night Night. What's your handle on? Twitter and Instagram. You know, it's Miss Bianca AK. I think most of the people pro- here probably already know this, though. It looked like it's said, no, I have to go up. You know it. Thank you for coming, Bianca. And now we're going to get into Tyson. I have a couple questions for you. Let me pull up. Let me pull up my questions. I know my first one is we were kind of talking about how you laid back, Mr. Cool, mellow dude. And you see, in the, I feel like. That's a little different from the personality we usually see with 100 guys. We usually see, you know, a little bit more boisterous, a little bit louder, mm-hmm. you know, doing a lot of they, – they all got a little – they're all signature, little move at the line. And Tyson just, I'm ready to get this money. Like, I'm ready to go to work. How, what is your mentality going to the line? Just that. I'm just that. Sorry. Go ahead, Tyson. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it, man. I just be focused on and trying to win. You know, I, I truly believe, like, the difference between me and guys now, I feel like uh, times have just changed. So I feel like a lot of athletes are are more, what do you, what's the word I'm looking for? Outgoing and all these things mm-hmm. because they, they have to show their personality now because of social media. So some of those guys probably really want to be cool and calm, flexible, but they have to do things now to try to get sponsors and everything like that. And, you know, stuff like that. But for me, I really just be focused on what I got to do. I don't have time to be thinking about a pre-dance before I'm getting in the blocks or anything like that. I have to focus and just and, and worry about getting around the track and, you know, my just just running. Like, I don't want to think about nothing else until after the race. I, I feel you completely. I felt that in my soul. I ain't got time to be worried about a pre-race dance. Um, so I guess my question is, do you feel like nowadays – there is more there's more emphasis on personality than talent. Yeah. I mean the talent is still there. Don't get me wrong. This is one of the, the best Olympics ever, considering we have no fans, uh people are getting sick. It's 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 possibly dangerous. People are still showing up and doing things while getting virtual support. So I believe the talent is still there, but I believe now they the, the kids, they want to run fast, but they want to go viral. So you got, you know what I'm saying? They want to win, but I want to go viral. Even if I don't win, I want to go viral. You know what I'm saying? So I, I see are, things like preparing for that moment, like bringing out, I already wrote on the back of my um, bib number, which means you have to constantly be like, I'm going to put a permanent marker in my bag when they give them a bib no- number while I'm putting right. my uniform on. I'm writing, hey, mom, which I'm like, I, sorry, mom, I'm not thinking about you in the hipping tent. Like, I'm just like, yeah. I got to go, go get it. Yeah, every, go, every go, time. Go back in the hotel room because we no. have our bid numbers. But, you know, they have to put the little digital thing on it. Um, and or, or they're, they've already written something on the shoe, which is, you know, yeah, or they're the bringing a hat thing, or whatever. They give you there. Right. Yeah. So I feel like you still. Either, you know. either way, like, you're, you're bringing some, you know, it's, prepared a lot of times um i got another question for you because i i feel like you uh, technically are so how do you run the perfect hundred uh nowadays i feel like it's giving your all and, and having um uh mental control because like we said we wanted the u.s to sweep you know what i'm saying and it wasn't going to be an easy win because uh, hats off to um, what's his name from uh, Italy. Um, I can't remember his name, but um, 
Um, hats off to him because he wasn't going to be. Yeah, he wasn't going to be easy to beat. But at the same time, I feel like how you run a perfect race is being in your own zone, focused on run a court with your coach. You know, focused on your lane and whatever happens happens. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we get so caught up into the technique side of things when sometimes you just have to. You just got to, excuse my language, I don't like a word, you just got to grab your balls and go because you don't have time to think about, uh, I did this, I came up out of my drive phase, I did, you know what I'm saying? You have to focus on you, stay relaxed and go. And if you want to run faster, relax some more. You want to run faster, relax some more. That's just what you have to do and just try to get all the pressure off of you and just run your race. You know, I think that's how you run the perfect race, in my opinion. All the extra stuff, at this, when it comes to, the games, all the extra stuff, it doesn't matter anymore. You're like you're stepping on the line. Like one thing that I seen, I can um, that was amazing to me was the Warhol. Right, the guy mentally prepared himself to die. You know what I'm saying? Not literally, but you get my point. You know what I'm saying? He was slapping himself in the face. He was preparing himself mentally what he had to do for that race. Right, that's what he did. And he was prepared to die. If he like, if I die, I die. And then when Rod ran up on him, he grabbed his balls and said, "Let's go." You see what I'm saying? So that's just what you have to do at this level. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we just come up short in life. I get it, but at this level, you just have to go, man, and relax. And let everything fall in the place. You've been training for ten months. How many months you've been training? Ten months. You know what I'm saying? So. When it comes to this that moment, a ten months of training, <laughs> just go. You know what I mean? Like, don't think no more. I I, I always tell the story how me and Coach Lawman got in a fight before World Championships because this girl's coach wouldn't let me use the blocks, and he was like, "You can't move her blocks. She's working on something right now." And I'm like, "We five minutes to the World Championship finals. What the heck could you be working on right now? You just better get ready to run. You worry about your block studies right now, like." Right. We doing <laughs> um but we talked about leadership in the men's four by four four by one and me and tosh were kind of talking about like there's always been that dude who sat on the throne and i feel right now we've got a lot of princes who do you think is going to be the next king of the sprints in the hundred who's going to be that guy is it ronnie is it fred is it is it trayvon i think that's the hardest question i've ever been asked well, um, we keep it real. We bring the culture to track and field here. Yeah, um, that was that's a hard. Back. I, I, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why it's hard because it's hard because the king took a little vacation this year. So when he comes back, when Coleman comes back to Pride Rock. We have a new person in the ball game. You know what I'm saying? So now it's about. Who got the the biggest kahunas? Because when he come back, he gonna be mad as hell. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be ready to run. He gonna be ready to whoop anybody. He gonna be ready to uh, prove all the doubters wrong who are saying this or saying that. He gonna have a chip on the shoulder, and he gonna get out of it. And he's already at nine seven six guy. Uh, Bro, male nine seven seven. Uh, nine eight for uh Fred. Um, nine seven for Baker. Um, nine eighty for Marvin Bracy. We just have so many people, so many options. So it's going to be whoever just mans up. But that's my question. But if you had to put money on it, if put it on. we can say Christian Coleman, but does Christian Coleman have the attitude and the responsibility, accountability, accountability that goes into being a leader? Um, because you can't, because because if cause, you can't, if you can't get to the meat, because you didn't do your workouts. If we saying I believe, that, I believe Christian Coleman. I, then Trayvon should be the leader, and we're saying that we're not really seeing it from him just yet. So, I believe Christian Coleman is going, uh, he's going to have to learn some of those things that you just talked about. And I think he will, because track and field is a very forgiving sport if you take ownership to mistakes. It's very forgiving. You know what I'm saying? We can name a lot of people who've had a lot of miss out in the sport. It's very forgiving. You know what I mean? Just like uh, Shakari, um, she said she made a decision to do what she done. She takes responsibility for it, and the world forgave her. You know what I mean? So I think he will be forgiven when he came back. And once he runs fast, it seems like people kind of forget about 
other things. As long as you take uh, accountability for your mistakes. Um, but honestly, I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be 100% honest. It hurt me not seeing Baker uh, get a medal. Um, I, I'm close to Baker. That hurt his family. So I really feel like he has the tools. Damn, it's a lot of guys. I think he has the tools to be the next guy. He had the attitude. He had everything. It just wasn't his day. Trayvon has it too. He was so successful this year. I, I don't know what happened. You know, I haven't spoken with him. I don't know what happened. I guess it just wasn't his day. A lot of people are assuming he was hurt. Um, but here's what I disagree with you. Like, if you're going to be the king, Tyson, you're going to say, it was my day, you're going to beat your day. You say what? In the 100. I feel like the issue, I feel like when I think about the greats from Carl Lewis, right. you, yeah. Oh, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. You're, there is a energy and a confidence to say it might be, your, it may not be my day, but I'm making it my day. Oh, yeah, like, absolutely. And I feel like, you know, who, I feel like I'm looking for that from, because that's. Oh, yeah. right. right. I'm going to be, I'm going to be real right now with the, the confidence thing. Cause I believe Baker has had some injuries he had to overcome and things like that. Um, but with the confidence thing, the person who has that right now is Fred. His confidence on um, Instagram, Twitter, he, he he believes in putting stuff out there in the atmosphere and the universe. I don't know if it's manifestation, whatever it is. And he backed up everything he done. You know, so if anyone has the kahunas and say, hey, I'm going to do it, it's him. What are you doing? He says I'm going to make you believe what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. yeah. I'm in his caption yeah. from today. He said, Nike don't pay me to tell you just do it. They pay me to show you, show you I do it again. Come That's on. That's what I just posted today. Come on. I can't believe it in him. Now, Fred, a big dog. I've been saying that. Like, he's a big dog. It's a, I don't know if it's embarrassing or if he's just talented. The one minute I thought it was embarrassing for a guy to come to the flag. It's his flag. Because I remember when I met him in 2017 after he had the, the year that he had at Texas a and me and Mike T were at U.S. Nationals doing a free meat shakeout or whatever. And Fred Curley walked up. And he said, uh, he just, he just, it was just, a, I don't even remember what he said. It was just a, hey, how you doing? And I turned to Mike T and I said, that boy is about to be a problem. It was just in his aura that he knew mm -hmm. as a kid coming from college that y'all ain't messing with me. I'm, I'm here. Well, to when he was in college, I don't know if it's a true story, but someone told me when he was in college, he used to listen to that R. Kelly song. I think R. Kelly, I'm the greatest. You know what I'm talking about? We don't support R. Kelly. Yes, I know exactly what song you're talking about. Um, that song, I'm the Greatest. I was told he used to listen to that song every morning and wake his uh, roommates up. That song would play every morning, I'm the Greatest. So, you know what I'm say? You said when it comes down to run a great race, you got to pick your balls up. Oh, Fred got some balls. That boy. To pick up, he okay? Carrying the boy. Like, <laughs> he got some big balls is all I'm saying. A lot, of people, a lot of people don't, like, when you get fourth, it gets overshadowed. But people don't understand this man um, dropped down to the 100, made the team, and missed the 200 team by this much. And we and we can always talk about lanes. If he would have had an outside lane, you know, all these other factors. He's tall. He had an inside lane. But the guy has really stepped up and said he wants to be the man. He he just straight up done it. And know, the test so. of cojones it takes to say, I know we all know I can make this team in the 400. It's a sure, like, it's nothing's a sure bet. But for a curly main the team in the 400, no one's going to blink twice at that. But to say, I'm going to run with the big dogs and the one, the two, and bet on, he said, I'm going to bet on me. I'm going to bet on you too, what? right? What? Um, I'm like, I don't know. I'm really paid, paid because I'm a fan. We have so much uh, upcoming uh, young talent coming up in the U.S. And I, be I really believe that these guys in the U.S. is in good hands. Um, especially next year with World Champs being in the in the States, right? Um, I believe these guys are going to step up. They're going to show off for the hometown. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a, a, a crowd in the stands. It's going to be crazy. I believe, I believe one of those guys either – uh, Fred, uh, who else we got? We got Fred, Baker, Ronnie, Trayvon. We got 
uh, Noah. We got other guys. I'm probably leaving out somebody, but I believe uh, – oh, yeah, Coleman. I believe one of those guys are going to come close to the world record in the 100, um, definitely the American record. I believe one of those guys is going to come close to it, if not a couple of them. Um, Oregon has this magical – atmosphere thing going on people run fast there and sometimes they have a tendency not to run fast outside of Oregon I just believe these guys are going to you know show up and uh, whoever wins next year I believe I do believe is going to be the team that's just real well I want I want to take a little walk down memory memory lane because I know you and Tasha go back I, I need a little I need a little Tasha Tyson story and you know, I need some inside inside information on on Tosh back in the day. Tyson ain't got no story. I I have a Tyson story. I would like I to don't hear think it. Tyson have no stories about me. Um, well, Mike Tinsley did. Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> which is funny enough. I was training with Tyson um, when that that story happened. Um, so my I guess what we would call my rookie year. Oh, there we are at the closing Aww. ceremonies in sixteen. Um, that was my rookie year. I came down to Claremont to train with Tyson, Veronica Campbell. Um, who else was in the group at the time? Derek. What, what was Derek's last name? Um, Derek Williams. Uh, Derek. Aaron Armstrong. Uh, Dick was there. A couple other people. So, again, this is the person that, like, everybody doesn't get to see. Everybody sees the businessman on the truck, right? Mm -hmm. So I moved down to Claremont. I'm just fresh, you know, fresh out of college, got a little money in my pocket, you know, and at, first of all, everybody in the group took me under their wings. Like it was the names that I just named. Like by the time I went there, they were Tyson Gay, Veronica Campbell. Like they were those people. Um, so I went to buy my first car <laughs> and <laughs> I, long story short, I only got the car because Tyson came with me because I did, I had no credit. I had a little money in my pocket, but I had no credit. And the, the dealer was like, uh, yeah, so you didn't really get approved, but Tyson is here with you, so we're going to let you drive off this lot. Also, <laughs> also, I didn't have, um, I had to have this, this car. I had to have a red G37S Infiniti. And it was a manual. So, I couldn't drive a stick. <laughs> so the story that I always love telling about Tyson is Tyson came to the dealership with me. I bought this car. I could not drive this car. And we get off the lot and we get to a red light. Light turns green. Anybody that drives stick, you know you have to balance the clutch and the gas. And this clutch, it, it was a very stiff clutch. I came off the clutch too too fast and we the car stalled out. So I immediately started panicking. Cars behind me beeping, get out the way. <laughs> and Tyson is in the passenger seat and he said, You got this. Relax. They don't have to wait. Say it loud because I was going to make it clear. Sorry. Tyson just put his hand across me and was like, You got this. Don't worry about them. They got to wait. Just take a deep breath. Put the car in the <laughs> Over. <laughs> True that's story. A, that's the type of energy we need going on to this forward one. Like straight up. But then the very next week, <laughs> we all lived in the same apartment complex and we lived on this hill down the street from practice. So he gave me that energy coming off the lot, right? But then the very next week we go into practice, all the guys were in one car going to practice and I'm driving my little, you know, I, I feel like I'm big hot stuff in my car. I stall at the light. Tyson is hanging out of the window. Get this car out the way. <laughs> because it's different when you late to practice. No <laughs> <one's> <laughs> like, oh. Move this car out the way. <laughs> I mean, I ain't like, I know, I know being that person in the back of you, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. But that that's my Tyson Gay story. I don't think Tyson don't have no. I was. I don't really have. I don't really have a lot of stories with Tasha like that. Like that was that was a that was what you call a moment. You know what I'm saying? Um. Tasha's always been dear to me. Uh, Tasha and I both, um, we both have a, a, a different type of uh, mental approach, uh, how we observe things. And I think that's where our connection came um, over the years, especially when it came to track and stuff like that. 
um, how you want to handle races, how you want to handle nerves, things like that. So we've had uh, deep conversations and uh, we've uh, created that chemistry just based off a lot of mental things when it comes to track and life and things like that. So she's always been a, a good person, a good friend to talk to when it comes to life or handling track situations. So um, that's kind of where our, our uh, connection uh, came from. And I would have to say, Tasha talks about you with the highest regard. She she is very protective of you. She says, you know, Tyson is the kindest soul I ever met. And I, in my experience with you, you have, you have always been so kind and so sweet. I'm like, this is this is Tyson Gay. He's taking the time to talk to me. Um, but yeah, I, you can you, you can definitely tell it that Tasha really loves and respects you. I do. I, and, and what she's what she's referencing. I might be is gassing. when we were putting together the guests for the show and, you know, talking about today is a relay day. I was like, if anybody comes crazy at my dog over the relays, like it's, we gonna have some, so that's what she's referring to that. Like, I, I don't play about Tyson. I don't play about Tyson. I, <laughs> hey, I appreciate the love, man. Um, I feel like we are already over time. Like we always are. So we have to, but we're going to have you it. back. We're going to have you back. I right, appreciate that. I appreciate you guys having me too, man. I really appreciate it. So have me on again uh, when we're talking about something else. Uh, I'm normally on the serious type, but even if it's something casual, you know, make sure you invite me. We're going to have you back. We're going to have you back. We like to have fun, but we also like getting the the master class from the masters themselves. So thank you guys for joining us today. Be sure to follow us, at, us everywhere, Twitter, IG, Facebook, Instagram, all the things. Um, follow Track Girl Summer on Instagram and YouTube and Twitter. Follow Tyson. Drop your handle so people can follow you. Uh, Tyson L. Gary on Twitter, on Instagram. And is there any way people can su support you, send you money, <laughs> purchase something nah. of yours? No, nah, not <laughs> yet. Nah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in between stages right now where I still train. Um, I still love it. Um, injuries be catching up to me stuff just with age and so forth. But um, I think I'm a, I'm a dabble into coaching or whatever. So... If someone wants to reach out, I, right now I just give out advice. You know, someone will work. I just give out advice right now, but I'm definitely yeah. dabbling. I'm just, I just need the confidence and need some some support to make that. Well, we're going to get on the phone and talk to you about this because you, Tyson Gale, talk to about be paying this. for that I'm advice. Support. <laughs> um, well, if you can't purchase any, you can't purchase any merch of Tyson's right now, but you can still send a black woman some money today. Um, don't forget to do that. Um, Tomorrow morning, before the show, if you just want to spend like four straight hours with us, we'll be doing a watch party at 8.15 yes. Eastern. Yes. We'll be watching the men's um, four by one, and you'll get our live reaction. We're having a watch. And then again, on Saturday, we'll do the same thing, same time, um, with World Athletics doing a watch party for the men and women's four by four. Um, so be sure to come back here to do our show. Um, same place, same time. And you can see if Tyson and, and yeah, Natasha's yeah. or me and Bianca's predictions were right. And no matter, and remember, <laughs> and remember, no matter what time of year it is, it's always a track girl summer, baby. So thank you guys for having us. I'm getting off because I have to go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh. Bye, guys. Bye, Tyson. All right, peace.